Welcome to another episode of Tactical Crouch. It's been a whole week. That's how long it took for me to sober up, but I'm officially sober now <laughs> after seven days. Um, I feel good. A little bit tired, but you know that's good. normal. Um, you know, forgot we were recording tonight, but the good news is I didn't go out drinking beforehand, so it's fine. You know, I was just playing games instead. Speaking of games. My goodness, we've had games over the weekend, and we, we will have did. more games in, in the coming week. Oh, will we? The pack is starting. We're going to have so many games, too many games, um, a lot of games. Yeah. So many games that uh, if you are trying to watch every single game, well, now you can't. Or well, maybe you can, but if you are trying <laughs> right. to, my goodness, uh, yeah. Godspeed, it's a lot. I'm going to struggle. I didn't get through. I did not watch every single game last year. I probably will not end up watching every single game this year, but I'll try my best. Uh, it's already getting hard. I'm already falling behind, as we'll find out in this episode as we review the week gone by and week two of NA. Uh, we'll find out what I did and didn't watch, and we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. Um, but, I mean, a few things actually did happen this week outside the games as well. So, you know, we've got, we got some news to cover. Mm-hmm. We've got some games to cover. we got stuff. Do True. It's nice to actually have things to talk about that aren't just like, so... If Doomfist was a tank, not saying he will, not saying he won't, but what if he was, like, do you think he would have, like, a Glock or, like, a Smith & Wesson bots? I mean, we're getting there. We're getting there. Smith & Wesson. <laughs> getting, Those are the two choices. We're getting back to that old chestnut. Nah, shut up, you and your Northern Lion puns. <laughs> God, so this kid in fucking in Discord. All weekend is just like so. That's what my favorite content creator, Northern Lion, would say. <laughs> what can I do? Actual fucking real life stay account. I, f- I fall asleep to him every night. <laughs> I bet you do. That's what I constantly do. Oh, Christ. Super auto patch is super fun. Any, uh, any new exciting things? In your lives this week, I know Yiska did a million interviews and articles. Those uh, were fun. To everybody, oh, particularly exposed, so. exposed uh, who Atlanta has and has not blacklisted. True, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Yeah, looked good. Well done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing God's work. Yeah, blacklist. So how's uh, how's everyone feeling about the end of the beta? Huh? Mm. However, it's not coming back. How Ever right. about it? How about that beta? So, how about the fact that now, as I was, as I saw accurately report on Twitter, uh, now mm. that the beta's over, the Overwatch League will be going back to Overwatch One. <laughs> can't play the beta. No Can, you right. Can you imagine, man? So, the the thing is, like, we'll the reason it. I couldn't answer the, your question, why? What I did last week or what happened in my life is because the, the same reason why I'm especially upset about this news. The reason is because I don't feel I have time to do literally anything than to like do stuff in this game in order to keep on top mm. of it, in order to hit certain thresholds of like justifying a living. Meanwhile, I'm submitted to a... <laughs> Four week log, just no beta, no like very limited info on what's going to come. Viewership is already back to normal. Type of actual six layer of hell depression. Like I'm, I I'm I'm not sure if I'm capable of speaking about this objectively because I'm so entwined with the with the destiny of this game. I'm not just pot committed. I'm like deep in this sunk cost fallacy. But man, did this set my life forces. Bro. I, I, yeah. it's, it was, when I saw that, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I felt like I jinxed it. <laughs> like I, I tweeted, I had like a tweet. Yeah, it was your fault. Where I said, like, we very soon need a foreshadowing of new content. Mm -hmm. And then the monkey paw curled, and we had a foreshadowing of content 
in four weeks that we're going to have an announcement of the content that is coming, which is not even guarantee of the next beta stage, and we don't know what's in there. And four weeks is already way slower than I had hoped. Like, I really wanted every stage to have something new. And by new, I mean new hero, new map. You know, something that keeps the hype going. Okay, um, devil's advocate for a second. For for a moment, because I agree with a lot of what you're saying, right? Like, it's really sad. Quick, yes, go ahead. Really quick. Shh, just a second. Episode 233 brought to you by <laughs> Devil of Vista Bay Bay, Battle Crab, Refine Bean, Bronze Bot Buha, Chare, Commissioner Picasso, Chris R34444, Cash 67, Lol Shin, Pork Shop Sammy, Rex Zane, Volumel Smooth, Nuts in Your Misery. All right, so uh, let's get into the episode proper now, 233. Uh, first up is going to be kind of closing thoughts on the first beta phase. What's, uh, what's, what's going on here? Like, where, where are we at? Uh, this is probably not going to be... I mean, I think there's some positive takeaways, but there's yeah a bit of Sorry. weirdness surrounding what the hell's going on with the humongous break between this mm -hmm. and now whenever the next beta phase is, which we don't know what, when that's going to be just yet, but we do know we're going to get some sort of announcement in about a month's time where they'll be telling us about the next beta phase. I mean, yeah, uh, which means we probably won't get the next beta phase in one month. It means that they'll tell us about it and then they'll announce the actual date. We'll get it yep. when we get there. So it's an announcement of an announcement, which is sadly very common space in the, uh, well, in the industry. Yeah. Well, just in the industry. So yeah. I actually got nothing to do with esports, to be fair with you. It's just the game. Um, and Yisker is very sad, boys, right now, because uh, beta being down for this long is not ideal. Although, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out as well. Like, what is it? What, is it what do they need? What do they need the time to do? I mean, the obvious yeah. answer is they need the time to do more development, maybe, for the next beta. But I, I, I don't know. Like, it, why not leave it up? I don't even... I don't even know what the expectation is for the next beta. Yeah, why not leave it up? I mean, maybe there's a technical reason behind that. Um, They're leaving up the beta kind of... for pro players, right? Huh? They're leaving up the service for pro players, right? It's, maybe it's a scale uh, issue. But... Well, they're, they're leaving up a tournament realm for the pro players. Yeah. So what's happening is the pro players are going to be competing in Overwatch 1. I'm not, hang on, this is going somewhere. I'm not just rehashing the same joke. They're going to be competing on Overwatch 1 to then re-qualify into the Overwatch League on Overwatch 2. <laughs> oh, yeah, I feel I like they actually have the like, contentness experience, yeah. I joke, I joke about that, but at the same time, like, you know, the whole, we, I'm not trying to go off talk about, uh, topic about the open div thing. I, I actually know why they have to do that. It's actually logistically very difficult to uh sure. i mean you can't do it you can't do open div on overwatch 2 unless it's an open beta anyway well not not to sidetrack too hard on that uh i joke about it but i but all, I, I joke about the people joking about it which doesn't make any sense which makes it sound like i agree with the people joking about it but in a really backwards way i joke about it to show that i don't agree with them but then i look like i do so it doesn't make any sense how many uh, anyway. layers of irony are you in Avril? I don't know, too many. I mean, so many layers of irony that the irony is lost on everyone and sometimes even on myself. And I've lost the cause. I've, I've not stayed the course and I've lost the entire like objective yeah. of the irony in the first place, which means I've just failed. Um, so speaking of failure, what's going on with this, this whole beta? I don't even know what to call it. Just this one big gap. Joe, you've had some time to kind of uh, stew now where I didn't let you speak earlier. Now you've forgotten what you're going to talk about. Um, no, I do remember, weirdly enough. Oh, good, um, good, good. My my devil's advocacy comes in the form of A, added time to hopefully polish whatever beautiful new toy Papa Blizzard Activision, whatever they're called these days, uh, is, is giving to us. And B, is there like any, <laughs> is there a competitive like hardcore mindset that i can appeal to in the sense of like not introducing a new hero every stage and saying isn't that better for like the 
overall strength of the competition to not effectively have like more positive hero pools. The melee player has locked on. He's streaming in front of five viewers. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying though, right? Like in in a way, it is kind of like a, a nice blessing to just like have a a meta bubble for a little bit and then pop it for an, you I know mean, something new, right? How long how long though? Like one one stage is usually the length for a meta bubble. Instead Ideally. Of the entire history, which means like yeah, if if every new stage had a new hero, that would be kind of good, wouldn't it? Like that'd be ideal. I so, would think so as well in the grand scheme of things, but I could also see like from a player's perspective if these are like very pushed a la like sojourn prior to her being nerfed, like maybe it could get a little frustrating having to like jump into these new heroes immediately like if we have a bad if we don't have somebody to play the new whatever the new tank then we just suck or if we have nobody to play the new support and we just have you know that we're just bad at it, then we just suck and it's just like i could understand where that could be frustrating to you know try to deal with which i'm trying to remember how the old cycles used to be when we used to get new heroes where the new hero would come out it obviously mm. wouldn't go on tournament live for a while and then all these issues you're talking about where it could be unbalanced usually get ironed out. And by the time it hits Overwatch League, it's usually in an okay place. Not all the time. Sometimes it's still obviously broken as fuck, but yeah. there's at least a little bit more lead time, which means if there was going to be a new hero that really should be out like kind of now-ish, right? Yes. To give, give like a month or so, however long required to flesh it out in terms of people testing it and then... Mm -hmm. And then I get into the Overwatch League, so I don't know. Um, yeah, we are at but, best getting one in the mid season, right? We have the break there; yeah. it sort of works out that way. But like, like, I think that's the minimum. New, they they gotta do a to. new hero at some point. They have to. I think because otherwise, in... what is the point of the second beta phase? Yes, like they have the to be thing. adding and tuning, and like they really have to be going under the hood because, like you said, it is still up. It's just up for the can pro I, players. Can I devil's advocate, your devil's advocate. Go ahead. How many layers? Of, of devil devil's or, advocacy do we have to go yeah <laughs> um like you have the lesser demon i have the greater demon of the devil's advocating uh no i because here's the thing is like if they need another month to work on something to put into the next beta phase i mean what what the hell is it because what is it that because basically whatever you're putting in the next beta phase in my mind should pretty much already be done by now like if you're still well, oh shit! Like we need we need an extra month to put something in the beta. Like you're like real last minute. I don't know. Like you you how how dire are you? Do you know what I mean? Like you're how how completely, um, you know, last minute is everything here? Like what are you gonna like? Oh my goodness! The night before the new beta phase, we finally got this done. Like how far like, is that? Is that where we are now? Like it can't be. No way. So, because that would be awful. That would be that would be like truly the worst case scenario because it means development wise, it's completely fucked. Uh, and mm. I'm not saying it can't be that, but I just I don't I don't think I can accept that that's the reality. Yeah. Um, call it copium. I don't care. But I mean, there's simply no way. Like the Blizzard I know would rather, or rather, just whatever that one thing they want to do in one month, they would rather just not do that. And then just mm. release the next beta phase without that, then try and like rush through and get it done the night before. Like these, like some fucking college student trying to hand in a paper, like, oh my God, I have to finish this in, in, in I have one more hour to finish this and I have to hand it in. It's just yep. not how things work in the professional world. Uh, you'd hope. Sometimes it does work that way when it shouldn't, but. Um, I think there is some middle ground between like what you're saying of, you know, stuff has to have been worked on. Like, is this just polish and like, the this like minor conspiracy theory if you even want to call it that that like the beta is just being drip fed the content that is mostly done if that makes sense like i think there is this prevailing thought um and maybe i'm wrong in this i'm still uncertain or haven't heard enough of this to like have a pretty strong feeling that there is a lot that is done but not enough that they're willing to show I, so they're slow rolling it in a way I can tell you what I think it could be, and this mm. is this is me like, I don't know. I'll throw you, I'll throw your theory a little bone here. If okay. there is one thing that is a little bit last minute, that they're like, oh shit, maybe we should put this in, and they're like, 
maybe they do need a month to figure that out mm -hmm. and it will be worth the wait would be to put competitive or ranked in in beta true that I would know be a good start all the talk so far when people are like oh why is there no rank can you put in a ranked and they're all like well you know it's currently not the priority and you know it's uh, it's actually a lot of technical work and mm -hmm. uh right now we want to put that work elsewhere blah 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 right it's the real and this is the this is the hopium angle the real hardcore hopium angle mm -hmm. is that they've done a 180 on that and they want to use an extra month to try and put in a ranked because they realize that maybe Hopefully. they should put it in, i don't know uh, and and they do need to they do need to delay the next phase to get that out like that that would make sense but you know what it makes too much sense it makes so much <laughs> sense that i don't want to believe it i can't i i just refuse to believe it because it makes sure, sense. Yeah. Not much sense a month bro this is a Fortnite Tuesday to launch a new game mode. It's just yeah, but Fortnite well, has an army of developers. You know, they Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite has a Epic have a small country working for them. <laughs> Thing is, like, it does feel like it. I, I, from from what I understand, like the workflow that they have is very hard to change. It's not okay. like up to the okay this. Keep in mind, this could be completely wrong, and maybe they have switched it. And mm -hmm. let's let's talk about hypothetical scenarios that don't involve a blizzard. Just to give you an idea of what people in our Discord have been discussing is in software development. There's stuff like organizational stuff like Scrum, where you have okay. like dedicated, educated Scrum masters that are like structuring tasks and keep everything like in line to, in order to meet very strict product um, delivery okay. lines okay. that, for instance, a company like Epic uh, uses. Um, there's, there's more sophisticated systems than that, but uh, that, that allows for a more timely and like up-to-date delivery. And this is not something uh, that, in my understanding, has been done in the past, at least at Blizzard. Now, it's, for company X, it could be very hard to adjust to that new cycle without completely overhauling their development structure. Sure. At the same time, man, I'm just so beyond caring why it is. Hmm. I'm so yeah. fed up with, like, whatever excuses there is as to why I will also say like reading and this is me like being in my head I'm sure mm -hmm. but like I'm reading John Spector's tweet right and it reads I haven't seen it what did he say so someone upon the um, he said thanked people for the uh, for participating in the first beta and said like it is okay. admittedly an announcement of an announcement but we want to continue communicating with players well, what what's coming soon and I also wanted to clear a set timeline see you on June 16th and someone asks will there be a big communication between now and the 16th and then John Spector says yes but the June 16th event is where we'll have more significant Overwatch 2 news to cover do you see okay. the keyword in this sentence? Significant? Yes. Does that not well, make your just, uh, stomach churn, bro? <sighs> Significant feels... is fuck all. Yes. I think if we're to be, you know, charitable to what he could mean, right? Like, let's not necessarily get our hopes up, but if that's when they're able to or if that's when the deadline has passed internally so that they can talk about this um maybe maybe there's an essence of tangibility there where it's like we can't really talk about what we want to in these like little news updates we can highlight some stuff we can talk about some stats from the beta we can you know maybe give you a, a very very loose vague you know pipe dream idea of what's going on internally and like tiny little roadmap tidbits but until june 16th that's when we can actually talk about where we're going next what actually is going on what we're adding or changing right it's it is more significant but i think that is more tangible than significance significant. just doesn't sound to something that we would will eventually think of as significant that's my problem like if if it was actually like Hmm. something very like big 
let's say, a roadmap of like four new heroes coming this year, this would not be the Age sure. of Sophia. Uh, this would I... be a little bit more hypey. I feel like we're already once again in the mode where we're trying to squeeze the most out of the little things we have already, and it shouldn't be this way, man. Uh, I mean, I don't think anybody would disagree that it shouldn't be this way. I think maybe the view of the language here is, and I and I mean this in no way to reduce how you feel, but like this could be a little bit of a biased view. I think most people view the word significant as like, oh, what could he mean? I think it excites people, if anything. Um, and maybe that should be tamed, but. Yeah, I, I'd be interested to see how, like, the general populace views that, that word. It's just, like, it's impossible to think we're not negative right now. Net negative, in my mind. So, mm. for okay. every 1.5 million concurrent live viewers, and yes, that's a, long, a wider population than just 1.5 million people, of course. That's probably, yeah. like, three, maybe four. There's 4.3 million people that saw the donkey video and like sure. 2 million people that at least thought he had a salient point. Mm -hmm. right? That's the emotional landscape of people that consume content created around this, uh, this game, right? Sure. Like how much longer do we need to get out of the trenches, man? <laughs> I think if if there is a takeaway from any of the the first initial beta is that there are some glaring flaws in the overarching strategy that Blizzard has employed, um, and hopefully that gets remedied in terms of like messaging, optics, what this is, what it is not, um, and even then, yes, before anybody jumps in, like you cannot convince everybody that this isn't the full release of the game. I full fully aware, um, but I think uh, the you haven't the convinced messaging, me, bro. Sure, sure. You haven't um, convinced me this isn't just like... Okay, let's be fair. Three times the regular content update that other live service games deliver. Sure. I think that like On there is going basis. to be like some... There's no way that, that you know Activision Blizzard is going to be able to keep up with like the likes of you know Riot and maybe Epic if they're still doing what I think they're doing with like Fortnite, which they very well could be. Um, I just they think that's developing a like metaverse approach on the on the side. And bro. if if they want, if if we want to get them up to speed, it's going to take a lot of time. I think this is just ingrained into their culture at this point that it, everything is super slow and it takes forever and it goes through all of these checks and it has to be polished. And, uh, like, it's also it was, worse. I, I, it's also worse. It's not. Sure. We can't justify the quality anymore. We can't. I agree. I you I don't think you're gonna like you're you're speaking to the choir here. It's just I <laughs> spinning it different ways. I don't know. Like I agree. Like it, shit's not good right now, and it's not looking like it's trending up. But there are some intrinsic things, like the move to five v five, which we are going to lose some people. But I think it is more healthier for the game. Sure. Um. There. There are. There are. Uh, this is a better base game than I think Overwatch one. And I think now that we are refining that base and, and putting our finishing touches on it, we can start to build up. And I think that's where a lot of the positivity is coming from or, or a lot of the positivity is set to come from. Once we get that first hero edition, I think your feelings on this game, not do a 180, but I think you're much more bullish on it. But I still I got, think... I got the answer. Go ahead. I have the solution. Here's what Blizzard need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the beta doesn't come back. What they do is they just uh they just they're they're in the trenches and they're just gonna you know work on the game and then it'll come out when it comes out and then uh two weeks before the game comes out they say oh we're doing beta again guys it's actually just the full game um and this time donkey has got nothing to say about it there you go he can shut the fuck up check me. um and then and then the game comes out i don't know like I, and then the you woke up about, the more i'm like huh and then you woke up then what and tr desperately try to fall asleep again. Yeah. I. Uh, I mean, I, I just, I just self-induce the coma, and I just like set set an alarm for about a year. I'm like, if I self-induce a coma for a year, by this time next year, I should have Overwatch too. <laughs> uh, and everyone will be like, "Oh my god, he's still alive! He's alive! He didn't die." Um, life support, bitches. Um. Anyway. 
uh, I saw Dying Games are on life support. No, we're not. A, but that's not us though, because we actually no. have a new game coming out. I don't um, think we're that. So it's just there's there's like no right answer. You know, they're they we're back to the whole discussion of well, you know what, Blizzard are backs against the wall, lose lose scenario where mm. truth is the game should have already been out. You know, because it's not, it's heavily delayed. They can't put any development resources into Overwatch 1 because they work on Overwatch 2 because it's already delayed as it is. Um, and they can only do so much in terms of pushing out content and polish. And the pace they're doing it is on is obviously not fast enough, but it's just the reality of the situation that they're in. Uh, and obviously, you know, if we if we had a small sovereign nation uh, like Epic Games do, I'm sure we could have pushed out the game by now. But we just don't. So it is what it is. So it's just it optically, it looks awful. As I don't know, really nothing that can be done. It would have almost been better for, you know, in hindsight, for them to not have done Overwatch two this year at all, which would have definitely have sucked. Yeah. But I think. The fact that they even came out and did Overwatch 2 this year, people expected a lot more from that experience. Yeah. Even though it was a good experience, it's like a real, it's a real, like a real tiny taste test, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's just not enough yet, and I don't know, they're struggling to... I, I, I see I see Yiska's argument as like, oh, but you know, they could have just kept the beta up, but at the same time, I think even doing something like that just exposes more of how little there is in the beta, because would you have really wanted to continue playing quick play for another two months? I don't know how many people would do. Some people probably would, but yeah. more and more people just wouldn't. It's almost like op it's almost like the optics is better if you take it offline, right? <sighs> Maybe create it's... a bit of forced create a bit of forced it... scarcity. Agreed. Yes, one hundred percent there. Like and and, and, allow, and then you don't allow people just to get bored on quick play. So I, I true true I get it. I think that's another one of those, like, I don't even know if it's a lose-lose, but, like, you're kind of damned if you do, because it's, like, if you take it offline, I think there is, like, I think Reinforce tweeted something similar to this, and I could be wrong, so apologies if if this is not you. Um, Somebody tweeted, like, something to the degree of, oh, it looks like I have to go back and play, like, or I really enjoyed playing Overwatch 2's tank, like, I'm going to cue that a lot. And now I have to go back and play Overwatch one like that kind of sucks. And like, I wish I could just play Overwatch two. Like, I, I get that feeling and I definitely understand like the angle of like forced scarcity and like, you know, a little bit of absence makes, you know, people more fond of it. Like agreed there 100%. Um, but it's just the alternative. It, it just isn't as good. I don't know. I think people are starting to like open their eyes to that. Like yeah. 5v5 is good. You know and what? People like it. I'm actually I'm I'm I would love to see the data on this. I mm -hmm. think there's a lot of whiplash out there as well in terms of I think if you're a developer in Blizzard, you must you must be getting mad whiplash right now because one side is telling you like, oh, this is boring. We need we yes. need ranked because quick play sucks. I mean, how who can just play this over and over? It's boring. On mm -hmm. the other hand, people forget that like I don't know. I, I'm just gonna make up a number here. Straight up make I'm just gonna fabricate a number. Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of Overwatch players only play quick play. Completely fabricated number sources. I made it up. But it's high. Whatever the real number is, it's like I, the vast majority of our watch players probably are only quick play players. So on one hand, people complain that there's no uh, ranked. But on the other hand, aren't most of your players quick play players anyway who don't give a fuck? So what do you do? Like who would? It's almost like you want to make. You obviously will want to make a rank because people do want to play ranked. But if you make a ranked for Overwatch Two Beta, you're really only making ranked for what is statistically speaking probably a small percentage of people right yeah 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 a lot of people don't necessarily <laughs> enjoy ranked but at least it gives you something to do and i think that would be another angle that hopefully this month gives is like some sense of progress i think that goes a long way in terms of replayability I'm not saying, right i'm not saying they shouldn't do ranked that's not what i'm saying at all oh no no, no. i I'm i know just, that I'm that's i'm just saying like it must be like this crazy. Mm -hmm. Do you know, like what the is data that, what shows that, that nobody plays ranked, and then we What's have the these incredibly vocal people that are screaming for ranked. What, like, what do you do? What is the meme of that guy sweating and he's got this hand on his head and the two red buttons? 
you know? Yep, yep, yep. And and Blizzard is forever, they're forever looking at those two buttons like <laughs> catered to competitive players, mm-hmm. catered to casual players, and they just, they're, what do I do? What do I do? And the worst part about it, and this is the this is the true curse of uh, working mm-hmm. on Overwatch, is that no matter what you do, the other side, the one side will always think the other side is being favored. Yes. Because if you ask the competitive yeah, audience, yeah. they'll always say, oh, the casual players, they're blizzard to give them everything. We, they, they don't pay any attention to us. Mm-hmm. We never get anything. You ask the casual players, they'll say, oh, the competitive, Overwatch League gets everything. Oh, the blizzard do all, this, these, all these things with the competitive players. They don't care about us at all. Both sides think that, that they're the ones getting shafted mm-hmm. at the same time. So I don't know. It's I think I go, that's, that goes across the board for everything. Like, I think every uh, game. Any kind of competitive no, scene. No, it's that. not. I don't think CSGO has that issue. I don't think Valorant has that issue. I don't really think that League of Legends even really has that issue. Not from what I've seen. Uh, and I, I actually regularly do play League of Legends personally as well. I don't know about Fortnite, but I don't know. Mm. Like, uh, I don't think Apex has that issue. No. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting one. I'm sitting here. I, think I know. I know. I know mm-hmm. why, real quick, quickly, quickly, I know why Overwatch has this issue, because we're like the Stardew Valley of competitive games. Because, <laughs> like, we should be a competitive game. Some people play our game literally like it's Stardew Valley. Like, they think it's... Sure, yeah. Know. People people, people both look at and also play and also experience our game in a way that is like, I'm playing The Sims 4. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is like, I mean, fuck it, fine, but those same people are also then like super vocal, like, no, yes, the game should be The Sims 4. Why are you trying to make it competitive? Whereas I don't, there's like, no, that that person I straight up don't believe exists in Counter Strike or Valorant or even Agreed. Legends yeah. or even or Apex or even fucking Fortnite. I that agree with the first two, the other two, I'm a little less um, somehow, somehow that somehow not only does that person exist in Overwatch, but there's fucking just it's like a lot it, of that actually feels like most of the play base. Yeah, I don't know, in some ways, yeah, I feel sorry for the devs. Yeah, that's. Agreed. I feel like that's. Yeah, when whenever I make statements like the ones before, I feel like an asshole mm. because, like, what? if you're a dev watching this, go. it's like, I get that this is must feel like jail to a degree. It must feel like unfair what I'm saying. It must feel like there's really like maybe I'm like the expectation that it could ever be differently is naive on my part. It's just. I think there's something to be said also for the viewers listening to this. Outside the developers' offices, there are also careers that are bound to the success for this game. Like, if this game dies, mm-hmm. maybe someone like Avril has a problem, at least temporarily. Sure. Maybe if this game dies, then everyone else, the players that have like given their most you fruitful years, huh? like, grinding t- like thousands of hours on this game, Mm-hmm. Don't get to do anything. People that, like coaches that are working su- such hours that they're basically forgoing all social life, all ability to have families, probably going forward into the future, missing parts of those uh, important years. Those are sacrifices that ultimately they have to decide for themselves. Mm-hmm. But also on incomplete information or potential that wasn't realized and to a degree i mean let's be perfectly transparent that applies to myself and sure. um Build the charge as well the i i know i shouldn't be mad at the developers i think the the problem sits higher up the chain right mm-hmm. but i'm also should and am and did myself for committing to something that ultimately never felt very secure and just taking a chance on it, especially the second time around since because because this <laughs> happened to me before with World of Warcraft where <laughs> this company killed the, the, yep. one of the biggest esports in the world overnight. Yep. So there's a lot of like emotional investment. You, st- mm-hmm. you talk to people, everyone f- just feels like so insecure and especially like what do you tell people that are at the start of their career that have like mm-hmm. the stars in their eyes and want to really commit themselves to something that they fell in love with and yep. you can no longer in good conscience say stay in Overwatch. I'll say this. 
I, because I think there there is a lot there. Um, uh, two things in particular stand out. Uh, one, I'm I for one, I'll speak for myself and and hopefully for some of the members of the community and say I'm glad that you gave Activision Blizzard a second shot. Um, I think there's a lot of people that I think you see a lot of negativity for you specifically, uh, but I think there are a lot of people who value what you do. Avril, this goes for you. If you ever question that, I think there are, you you both have done incredible, incredible things, and I think there's a lot of people who you know I mean cherish and, sell, and are entertained by that. Right? Don't sell yourself short. You've given Whatever. a lot to this game as well. It, it sure. Prob probably one of the most underrated parts of this community. <laughs> regardless, regardless, I'm not the one who's doom and gloom here. I'm not saying Avril is, but Yiska feels too happy. You know, go I'm, lucky. I'm, I'm I'm throwing out an escape rope, baby. We're getting you out of that cave, right? <laughs> Secondly, this game did survive a global pandemic. It barely by the skin of their teeth. And we have things going forward, right? Like we have new heroes on the horizon. When they come, I don't know. You don't shoot the messenger. I don't know when they're coming. But there is some solace in knowing that this game, they have committed to this being a live service game. We know that these hero injections are going to pop like nobody's fucking business. And people will come back they will we all know they will so yes is it a is it another waiting game is it another holding pattern i agree it's a bitch but we did go through the ringer we came out the other end with a beta we don't know when it's coming back but it will it, hopefully it'll have some new heroes and we will grow we slowly but surely we will grow into some sense of sustainability. I believe that wholeheartedly. I, I'm not all that doom and gloom about it personally. Good. That's because I knew this year was going to be rough anyway. Yeah, I knew that no matter what happens, this year is going to be pretty rough. Mm -hmm. um, because even if you do release something, as I said, that people aren't going to be satisfied for X or Y reasons. Exactly, because their expectations are all over the place. Um, it is what it is. I will only really look at the final product when it actually comes out and judge that for what it is exactly and yes. and make a call at that stage whether i think this has a shot or not mm -hmm. uh, and then also i guess judge the direction of the development after that whether blizzard are going to keep their promises or not in terms mm. of live service kind of stuff true um but to backtrack slightly before we move on we uh, are going to move on really soon mm -hmm. is to say that the solution to like fixing your your meme of which red button do you push? Just <laughs> sure. push one of them and just throw the other button. Go with out. it. Yes. Like, because if anything, the the gaming industry has proven time and time and time again that if you actually if you make a game that caters to an unbelievably hardcore audience, mm -hmm. that is either that's through them being hyper competitive or they're just hardcore gamers. Like, how would you? What would you describe as a hardcore gamer? Not a casual gamer, right? Someone that's hardcore. <laughs> Something like whatever your whatever your definition of that is. Yeah. If you do that, your game can and will be successful. Yep. Look at Valorant. Look at Path of Exile. Sure. Like, what is Path of Exile, especially a game that is like really not fucking friendly? No. It's so unfriendly that I'm too intimidated to keep playing it. Talk I, I played it initially. I'm too Tarkov, far. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to get back into it. Tarkov. I know all these games that like the average Overwatch player, you know, who who think they're playing Sims Four. Like, I, I think they I think gray matter would ooze out of their ears at games like that. Like, I don't even yeah. know if game, they'd realize games like that even exist. But like, I think they're my like, oh, hardcore games. Oh, oh, hardcore games. No, they, their brains would melt. I don't think they. They probably can't handle it. You know. Mm. Um. If it's not Sims 4 or Sims 5, I, I think they just, they would implode. Uh, but my point is, is like, you can make a game like Valorant, which is not fucking friendly, uh, super toxic, mm -hmm. way more toxic in terms of the play, but people are like, oh, oh I can't play Overwatch, so what a toxic game. Are people, are people racist and way sexist worse. and toxic? You've, you've never played Valorant in your life if you're saying yeah. that. If you're, tr if you're unironically saying that about Overwatch, you've never fucking played Valorant a, a day in your life. Certainly not a in game Europe. Like, <laughs> A game Valorant doesn't make is, it okay, but agree. Yes, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I know Valorant. I know. Valorant is infinitely more toxic yeah. than Overwatch will ever be. But why? Because there's way less casual players in that, which means there's a lot Correct. more egotistical motherfuckers, a lot, yeah. lot of kids who want to bang your mother. Yep. Um, 
and they're all like 13 year old super egotistical people mm -hmm. very few, like far fewer of those players exist in the game like overwatch so which is a good thing in a weird way um is it a good thing it is a good thing i think so but also but also i don't know in some ways uh, it's less good it's a, it's but, a good thing and a it's a good thing and a bad thing. That doesn't make a lot of sense. It sounds like I'm supporting toxicity, which I'm no, not. You're not. But what I'm what I am supporting is the fact that I don't know. If you're a 13 year old egotistical motherfucker, you're probably a hardcore gamer. And if you're a hardcore gamer, you're probably committed to your game and you're spending money in that game. And you're supporting the game in a right. way that casual players don't. Yep. Sorry, they don't. Nope. Uh, because casual gamers are probably the most like fair weather fair motherfuckers weather, that exist yes. on the planet. Great word. <laughs> like, so, and there's yeah, nothing the most, wrong the with that. Non -committal. I think there is something wrong with it, but you know, I, I don't want to get <laughs> yes, consumer. Uh, I, we we talked about this. So you, there's like, a lot of things wrong with it. <laughs> just to hammer your point home, and I've and I've been very vocal about this for I'm going to say since probably roll lock. I want to finish that, with one last thing. I want to finish with one last yes. thing, which is that i know i sound very anti-casual but let me <laughs> let me hand out my let me let me hand out my uh Where's your bone? What is it my, not even a bone the trump time. card the trap fucking, card the fucking the i don't hole. know the it's like you're playing a card it? i don't know okay let's just say a bone then i can't think of the okay. thing and i like my, my leaf not the leaf the branch i'll give you my olive branch, olive branch. My olive, there you go it's my olive branch for for the cash because i i you know i like to i'm going to debate myself here mm. i have to take the other side as well to see if the argument holds water and the other side is, well, what if Blizzard just presses the casual button and ditches the competitive button? If that's how it's got to be, then that's how it's got to be. Mm -hmm. I'd be down for that too. What I'm not down for is this fucking balancing shit they're trying to do. Yeah. This tightrope walking thing where, where everyone's unhappy. Like I said, each side keeps blaming the other. They, I, I'm sure the competitive side hates the casual side. The casual side hates the competitive side. Mm -hmm. uh, spoiler, the casual side is really wrong about this, but I'm just biased. Sure. Um, but look, if you want to make a, if you eat, choose to be Nintendo or choose to be, as much as I don't want to admit it, Ryan, or I, yeah. I guess, you know, if you want to be Nintendo and you want to refuse to believe, you want to just completely kill any competitive viability for your game because mm -hmm. you 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 want your game to be the most ca casual thing possible, and um, you you actively shut down esports and you actively are against competition. Mm -hmm. Bro, at least do respect to Nintendo for at least choosing the fucking lane. What is the swerving shit? Choose the lane. Yeah. Choose the lane, dickheads. Stop swerving. <laughs> choose the fucking lane. Because at least if you choose the casual lane for Overwatch, let me ditch. Let me get my parachute, jump yes. out the plane because I know you're done. Yep. At, you know, st you're at least not fucking baiting me anymore. I I, I don't like being baited. You know, mm -hmm. I I don't have to be here, but. Uh, I feel like I'm being baited at times. This is yes. such a 2010 wish, like, this conversation, by the way. Two th 2009. Wish, like, just, just choose to be Sims 4 and so I can get the fuck out of here, but at least you're admitting what you are. Yes. you you Overwatch since 2017, 2018. I, I can't remember exactly when, you know, Rolock specifically came out. Um, or maybe even just Hero Limit. Um. It, it has lacked a sense of vision for the longest time. And we've seen that time and time again with just core, core fundamental changes to the game, whether it be 5v5 or this or that or roll lock. Like it constantly happens. You need a, a f like foundation of the game to build on top of instead of changing out parts of that foundation, right? You look at a game like League of Legends, you have one map that you play on. You have a very clear idea of how the game is going to be played. Does that, you do the do pieces in that change? 100%. I think that's fair, and I think people are attracted to that. What they aren't attracted to is like what Avril's kind of talking about, is the sense of being baited, where like you don't know if this is a MOBA with PvP FPS elements, or it is more of an FPS. Nobody's certain on what this game is supposed to be, and I'm still unclear if Blizzard knows. So hopefully that gets fixed. On the other point, I ideally, I think in the perfect world is that the PvE element that comes at the release of this game, the game being Overwatch 2, uh, has a has a solution to the button pressing, you know, conundrum where both buttons can be pressed at the same time and both communities uh, can be to, remotely. Trying to have your cake and eat it too. That's what that is. May, maybe that's maybe I'm naive in that sense, and maybe you know the other community, the other half of the community, won't be as enticed by it. Ideally, they will, hopefully, but um, we'll see. I don't know. 
We fucked all the timely budget. Stuff. We fucked it very much. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. <sighs> So if you just start, if you decided, look, this is going to be an esport, then your game gets to be have an identity, and you can do that, and it'll be it'll be hardcore and toxic enough that we'll get that audience, uh, and there's uh, enough enough of a toxic hardcore dickhead audience that you can be like Valorant is today, mm-hmm. where their entire game and esports succeeds on being a toxic dickhead audience. But there's so many other dickheads that they dominate Twitch and they dominate, yep. you know, everything. Uh, so clearly it works. Clearly mm-hmm. it fucking works. So, just pick a lane. Anyway, have some um, vision. Speaking of toxic dickheadedness, the pe- <laughs> no, I'm joking. Which no, team no, gets that, it? Which team gets no, it? No, 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 I'm, I'm talking about myself, really. I'm a toxic dickhead. Fair at the end of the day. Fair enough. Um, I've gotten good at hiding it though, because instead of like yelling expletives at people in games, I just stay quiet now. I just don't say anything. Mm. I yell into the void instead. Yeah. Um, the void that is my brain, the ever expanding abyss in my brain. I just yell into it. So, um, so I keep my bad thoughts locked up. Uh, yeah. Next news topic, which, you know, inevitably we'll spend way too long on, but we shouldn't spend too long on, is <laughs> the whole Paris Eternal Naga Wub situation. Now, I don't think it's like, I don't want to turn this, I don't know. To me, it's not like, oh, who's wrong here? You know, whose side mm. are you picking? I don't know. Like, does it have to be a side thing? Does it have to be a faction? Does everything have to be tribal in 2022? You know? Yeah. I, now I'm going to turn this to a meta discussion. About yeah, the right. Fact that society <laughs> in 2022 has regressed to 200,000, 200, yeah. 22 BC, where everyone's in a fucking tribe again. True. Um, ooga booga, me, me, no, me, no. Me xenophobic, tr- yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm trying to motherfuckers trying to invent fire again. Anyway, um, <laughs> so what I'm in the Naga Paris Eternal story. Yes, Naga got dropped by Paris Eternal. Correct. Well, actually, the 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 chronological order goes: Wub gets picked up, and then he gets, and then Naga gets dropped. Yes. Even though, like internally, as soon as Wub got picked up, Naga probably got dropped. Or well, Naga might even have been dropped before Wub got picked up because you know they have the, the allocations and yeah. the financials and the budgets and all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, I don't remember. I was I was streaming and it was, and uh, Wub came. There was and he was like, "Oh yeah, everyone, have you seen the Wub news? And Wub got picked up by Paris." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Uh, and, and at the same time, we were watching the Paris Eternal game, Oof. Uh, the last one that Naga was playing, uh. and and I was like, "Oh yeah." So about that news, by the way, um. Wow, you know, you're, we're watching the Paris game, and you might not realize this, but this could be the last time you're seeing Naga. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, "No, nah, that's crazy!" Like, what do you mean? That's that can't be right. Like, no, 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 no. That's 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 so over the top, Avril. That, that's that's just crazy talk. Fast forward a couple of days. Oh, Naga got dropped. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wow, that wasn't even insider info. That wasn't even like me drop, just... leaking some fucking juice. That's just me understanding how budgets and how yeah. work. This is me like, yo, if they picked up Wub, that means they're dropping somebody mm-hmm. because they don't have Paris the has always been tight. Yep. They don't have the money for seven players. So somebody's getting ditched. And most likely it's Naga because he's been the one struggling and Wub directly replaces him in his role. Yep. So that's just the conclusion that I naturally came to. Yep. Um, and I think people were, people were understandably quite upset. Naga, uh, probably quite upset, but publicly mm-hmm. handled handled like a champ so you know yeah. i i gotta give praise to that mad respect he handled like a champ and uh even even uh wished wub the best of luck which again mm-hmm. you know mad respect handled takes that a, shit like a champion takes a man to a do lot that. Of, it's not a easy. lot of humility it takes mm-hmm. a lot of humility to do that so by the way both um, players did did very well um like for wub after that game to give me a loser's interview in his position that's also like not to be like to give a little bit of peek behind the curtain. I probably schedule six interviews. The average last year was two. Why? Because teams don't do losers interviews, other than those that idealistically believe it in that this is good practice, right? Mm. So, um, I feel like. Him coming out, giving me that interview, like being very open about it, 
like the, the the entire situation for him must have sucked, right? I feel like that was that was very big of him to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is, like, okay, Paris Eternal has the lowest budget in the league. Sure, I'm not saying they're one of the lowest budget in the league. They, oh, they are, just do have the lowest. They do have the lowest budget in the league. Okay. And you are like very certain of this. I'm very just certain to, just of this. To... Okay. Now, just okay, look at it from the outside, right? No team is remote anymore, correct? Every team has Can't to speak for APAC, but yeah, uh, I was going to say maybe true. the APAC team technically, true, but true, yeah. True. yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> but no APAC team other than Valiant even comes into question for being the lowest budget. And Valiant also now has a team house, as we heard, right? Correct. And also more players. They also have yeah. five DPS, yes. So they ha- the, the Paris Eternal have six players. None of them had mm-hmm. ridiculous salaries that could uh, ele- elevate their budget beyond. They have two coaches, which is the minimum. Um, they do have a team house. Actually had to chop a, a, a head coach for that in order to... Like it, it, the budget must have increased from last year, I think that was probably mm-hmm. already a hard sell. Um, so as soon as Whoop came in, I already knew Naga was gone, dude. Yeah. And real talk, I think that was a failed recruitment from the beginning, because not only do you need someone to always play. This is a player that only has ever demonstrated like three heroes in the Overwatch League, and all of them are projectile. Correct. You're talking about, you're talking about Naga or what? You're yes. Naga. Yeah. Like, just look at the meta, how many double hit scan situations we've already had. And it honestly, and this is by the way, like the <laughs> statement that Whoop gave me the only reason we're seeing that much Gunji is the Sparkle impact. Like, Sparkle willed that. That that's that's the meta I, I'm talking about when I say like people are copying when right. Tracer is the better pick. Mm. As it reveals itself right now as well. I think we will soon find out that it's just like straight up, like if the monkey comp is actually the better uh iteration. I think the Doomfest comp is no big question mark. It's more like is it Zarya or uh, the Winston? But if mm-hmm. it is the Winston comp, then the Trace iteration is the meta on most of the maps. And we can talk about points and whatnot. Right. But I think the lion's share should go to the Tracer composition. Right. Mm-hmm. Tracer Soldier, who who do you let Naga play? Yeah, it, that's that was my entire analysis of that DPS Hang lineup. On. Like I you need okay. three. Yes, because that can't be right, because all the Redditors told me that uh, Bob will <laughs> never be able to cover uh, Naga's extremely large hero pool. Like everyone's, the argument's like, but why would you have Wub over Naga? Naga's got this giant hero pool that has all these heroes in it. Like, I don't know if people realize this, but this is a... Checkmate, atheist. This is, this, the, the DPS line that the Paris Eternal have at a bargain now, is the one that we realistically probably in most of the multiverses saw on the shock last year. Sure. Whoop was very close to signing there, right? Like he said he was in talks. Yeah. I think there was a three-way situation, the flex uh, DPS um, dominoes that season were like, where does Shockwave decide to go? Where does Nero decide to go? And then Whoop was in talks, by the way, I think only with shock. That doesn't mean last year he was not like better than some other flex DPS that it could have been in the Overwatch League. It's mm-hmm. just like he seemed committed to that opportunity, and others actually probably did underwrite him to a, de- a degree, or assumed yeah. because like shock is courting, like you don't have a chance, right? You go to the shock if the shock calls. You go to Krusty, right? So that made it a situation. And by the way, I will say this is my opinion because I've definitely heard people tell me that they don't think as highly of Whoop and uh, that Crust, this is just like a pad pr- project situation like Tai was. That mm. can fail. Fair enough. If that's your opinion, I respect it. I think he's more t- talented uh, than Tai was, but whatever. Um, so this is like 
yes, sloppy seconds of shock. But that's still pretty good, dude. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I think he performed very well for his first game for the fact that he has had the least access to Overwatch uh, out of all the players. I don't hate this signing at all. And I I understand that we're like cluster mad at Avala for different reasons. But this mm -hmm. is a this is a budget thing. Yes. First and foremost. Right? This is a yeah. if you have to be mad, you have to be mad at the organization. But can you really be mad at the organization given the current outlook? So once again, we're back to square one where I'm sitting here like <laughs> sagging and creating new emotes with my face. Sure, yes. Like if if you want to be mad at anybody, yes, you have to be mad at the the organization, the pocketbook. Um and and to your point, like yeah, like with current projections, like it's tough to warrant spending a lot of money here. Um ideally you have all three. Ideally you have Wub Naga and Glister. I think yeah. that covers a lot of bases and you still have Naga's more limited hero pool to excel at that would be fantastic and i think paris would benefit a lot from that the issue is they can't afford it period the end yes are you going to see and i think plat chat i i think we've also said this i think most pundits have have been kind of warning about the you know the 30 day i don't i correct me if i'm using the wrong terminology but not for claw for cause like mm -hmm. you can just like terminate anybody within 30 days and Give them whatever. Oh no, that's that's some so four cost terminations come in, in place when there is a cause. There is a the contractual least, issue, right? the The thirty day is something outside of that that can be negotiated. It ha is a minimum of thirty days. So thirty days before you receive, they be, be, before you like no, sorry, you get told you're out of the team, and then they pay your salary, the the your annualized salary, the thirty days of what you would annually or monthly, mm -hmm. I suppose, not annually, but monthly earn, they pay that out and then they're done with you, right? Okay. Um, and some so, players have negotiated that to longer terms. Sure. And that's that's good. But to, to, to try and hone in on what I'm trying to say, because maybe mm -hmm. I'm confused, um, there is less player rights in the new yes. contract law in the Overwatch League, right? Okay, so I'm clear on that. The removal or the lessening of the player rights means that this is going to happen more consistently. Yes. I'm sure it's not the last case for it to happen, right? Yeah. Flat Chat said it. I think you've been early to that. Yeah. I think we've said it on this podcast. There are going to be more of these. I'm kind of surprised that more teams haven't done this. I'm yeah. to be completely honest. As ruthless as that sounds and as cold hearted as that is. At the end of the day. Business is business, right? It sucks. You want it. Everybody wants to have their dream. It, nobody wants to snuff that out. But. As competition goes, if somebody thinks that you're not up to scratch, then with the way that stuff's written right now, they, they can get rid of you for little to no reason. And then that's you can argue whether or not that's a good thing or not. Um, but it it's probably going to happen again. And I, I, I think I, nobody wants it to. But have I, we talked about mirror and mayhem yet. No, no. <laughs> OK, well, let me jump They're in getting there. I think right. Let me jump in then, fellas. Because um, here's the thing. I I don't think it's fair to... I, I mean, okay. It is fair to direct your anger at the team because maybe you really liked, maybe you really liked Naga. Maybe you mm -hmm. felt like uh, he was a really good player. Maybe you just wanted to see that team make a run back from last year you know mm. those things are all valid and you felt like uh, paris made a super short-sighted decision i get it but at the same time i think what you have to respect is that paris are making moves that they believe are improvements to the roster and mm -hmm. that will give them a better chance of winning and at the end of the day i think that's a super admirable thing and um Correct. maybe the most valuable thing that an org can be doing mm -hmm. especially one that doesn't really have a budget to work with especially one that by all other means has kind of checked out as an org not as a team but as an org mm -hmm. that makes sense so the team is obviously trying but the uh the management the org you know the budget isn't there they they 
are kind of just existing. You know, they just exist yep. in the space. They there are twenty teams in Overwatch League, and they are one of them. You know, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, but Avalo, J Mac, and you know the immediately the immediate management of the team itself, not so not the like upper management. Sure. Are obviously still trying to make moves to improve the roster to get results, and I respect the hell out of that because they could easily, you know, this could have easily have been like a Vancouver or Valiant situation last year where. Yep. I don't know if I could really say they were trying to do that. Like, I don't, I don't mm. you know, maybe they were and they just made really fucking bad roster moves, but I don't know. That's like, that's last year with the o, with the 016 stuff and teams that probably yeah. should have been 016 but got given a win somewhere. Um, you know, those teams are way more checked out. Like, at least the Paris Eternal are fucking trying. Yep. Um, so I think like some of the anger being directed at Devala is just I don't know. It, it seems unwarranted. And I, I heard what Yiska was saying before I dipped as well. It was, you know, like if you're like upset about Edvala for other things, then like, okay, well, you know, try and I don't know, <laughs> try and like Yeah, decouple a little. Direct your anger at the, the court. Ang- yeah, to, to decouple your anger at other things like Avala is if Avala didn't give a here's 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 the brother. If Avala didn't give a shit. If she didn't care about the team, she would have kept the club. Yeah. That would that would be the evidence they're not giving a fuck because then they're they're not they're not trying to make roster improvements. They would have kept Naga. And now there will be people. Yeah. Yeah. They'll yeah, that's what I said. If they kept Naga, that would yeah. be evidence of her not giving a fuck. Uh but to which people will come back and say, like, oh, you know, but uh what if Naga's better? Uh, like, oh, and all the people that just might just think that Wub sucks. I don't know. Sure. Because this is where I'm going to draw con- comparisons to the mayhem situation and just for what it's worth, I'm not saying. Okay, here's I, here's what I will say, and then I'll tell you what I'm not saying after I've said something that I've said. So, what I will say is that people, if if this angers you, if you're upset by the whole Naga being dropped thing, then you should be way more upset at Mirror being dropped by Mayhem, way more, because Mirror didn't even get a chance to show himself. Mirror Mirror literally got dropped after scrims. If you think about it, yep, he didn't even get to play official match. He just got dropped. Um, the expanding, I made it, I, I made an expanding galaxy brain meme that, uh, I was actually not brave enough to post on Twitter. And that's because again, I didn't want to feed more anger towards Paris by memeing on them. It kind of memes on them a little bit, but it's mm. also like, I don't know, there's a bit of, um, haha, me so smart intelligence is crammed in there because I, in the expanding galaxy brain, mm-hmm. it's like <laughs> the base level is don't drop any players. Then it's. Drop Naga after two weeks, and then beyond that, it's drop Mirror after zero weeks, right? Uh, and then somewhere at the bottom is like drop my Kelly before even announcing him. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, true. But anyway, the point is, is like if you're upset about Naga being dropped after two weeks, because you think it's knee jerky, how about the fact that how about the fact that Mayhem dropped, you know, how about the fact that Mayhem dropped uh, Mirror after nothing? Yeah, he didn't even fucking play. Right, you want to know the differences, and here's what I'll tell you: what I'm not saying. I'm not saying you should now go and direct your anger at Mayhem, like, oh, fuck the Mayhem. That's not what I'm saying either. I, like, really, you shouldn't be. Well, you 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 should feel angry at the teams if you just really like those players and you want to see them succeed. And I get it, but if you want the teams to have a better team, then you shouldn't be upset at all. Mm. Because here's the thing about uh, the difference between the Mayhem and the Paris in terms of what happened is, first of all, there's way more stock for Xe than there is for Wub. Because Wob's a tier two player, he's a rookie. People yep. don't really know who he is. Uh, they don't never seen him play, and uh, I guess the regular audience of the Overwatch League forever until the end of time, they've always had, always has been, always will be. Seemingly, they never learn. Is that they heavily underestimate tier two players? They all they all collect. Well, not every single person, but enough people that it makes me think they're a collective high mind. They they think tier two players are shit. Yeah, because. You still had the comments like, yeah, but Proper didn't play against Overwatch League players, so how could he be good? It's like, motherfucker, the top level of his career is better than half the Overwatch League already, so you know, you can just stop right there. Um, so the point is, people that have seen American Tournament, people that have seen Wub play, that know his capabilities, that know about the whole shock situation, know that Wub is good. Right? I've known that Wub is good. Um, I know that his hero pool is actually really good for this current meta as well because he's got the Tracer Genji, which is super important for this particular meta. Um, and Naga doesn't have that, but we all, and we all know that Naga was struggling. We all know mm-hmm. that as well. Um, yeah. 
but Wub doesn't have the stock that Xe does. Also, uh, I don't know that Mirror has the kind of dare I say stock or like this level of goodwill that Naga has because Naga kind of built up some goodwill last year because he made some good plays. He was a good echo. He was a good fire player. Um, they were part of that darling Paris Eternal roster that, you know, the little Paris Eternal that could, you know, that little team. And so he had that going for him. Whereas Miro, you know, Miro was on the big, bad gladiators roster, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, Oh no, they've had it too good. They're not the underdogs. People, people love the underdog stories. And I, you know, I do as well. So Mirror doesn't have quite have the same stock as Naga, and Wub doesn't quite have the same stock as XE. And then beyond that, mm. the optics of the Mayhem situation were much better because Albert came out and you know did did his explanation as he usually does, which shout out to Albert. I think that's a great thing that he does. Oh. Um, and that wasn't really explained by the Mayhem, although there's not really a lot to explain by the Mayhem because at the end of the day, if someone from the Mayhem, uh, sorry, by the Paris Eternal, it wasn't explained by the Paris Eternal, because if it was, at the end of the day, Paris would come out and be like, yeah, so we dropped Naga because we wanted Wob because Wob's a better player. Boom. That's that's what else do you want to know? Like that's the that's the fucking reason. I had to explain that like when I was talking, uh, I can't remember if I was doing this on stream or I was just doing it in my Discord, but it's just like I mean, people are like, Oh, I can't believe they dropped Naga. Why would they drop Naga? I'm like, because they believe Wob is an upgrade. That is legitimately it. Like, mm. what more do you want to know? They're like, oh, Avala should make a statement. Like, I've just made one for you. I've made the statement that Avala was just gonna make anyway. Like, literally, they believe Wob is a better player. That's 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 it. Yeah, that's that's as much explanation as not that you, as, as not as not just that you're going to get, mm. but that's all that's required. There's there's no more further explanation required. It's also and if you want you want to know the truth. You want to know the truth about mayhem as well. They also they also want Xy because he's he's a better play than Mirror, especially for the role that they're looking for. That's yeah. And Albert's going to come out with his paragraph explaining like yeah, you know we want a Mirror to maybe be like this, you know all roles plan. We didn't really want that. But at the end of the day, when you, when you take away all the PR. You boil it down to its base properties, you know, the core fundamental, you know, infinity stones of the universe that was built on. What it comes down to is they want XC because he's an upgrade over Mirror. Paris want Wub because he's an upgrade over Naga. Both teams just wanted to upgrade their rosters. That's fucking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now I, I will say, I I do agree that there's also a large chunk of truth to the argument that uh, Amaz was doing on, on Fifth History. Yes saying that a lack of uh, motivation from a player or a lack of confidence from a player is also a team-related issue. It's it's in equal shares. It's on the individual sure. to find it in themselves, but it's also in the environment to facilitate those um, th- that drive. And in my interview with Whoop, he also said that they, for instance, lack confidence in their play, and when they got confident, they briefly made it close, but when they on map two then couldn't like get it over the line against the uh, turn to find, then it looked worse again on map three. Now, that is also a team-related issue that JMA has also taken responsibility for. I think he also should. But once again, this comes down to resources, right? So... I think in overall, um, it's a it's a shitty situation. I also c- can think in ways where, for instance, if Jacob Wolf's report, where he said that um, Overwatch League franchises are currently not paying their fee, mm, okay, if that's true, maybe maybe there's more of a lo- moral obligation to ha- not have your um, franchise slots suck because it also reflects on the league badly like it mm-hmm. i'm not even going to enter or go into the business aspect of like your slot degrading whatever but it's like do you really need to be profitable now like is that i mean some people will listen to this and go like yeah of course i'm listening to this going I think like this should have been treated as your toy in the first place and not a serious investment. Mm-hmm. And given that especially the Paris team is sort of like one of the family owned teams, you know, from the McCord family, this should have been your like Mom and playground Pop. first in the first place, right? Like yep. Yep. you lose some money on it, you have fun with it, like you celebrate their victories. 
You did that in season three, and it turned out all right, right? So, yeah. I don't know. But and this if it is turns also, into something good, then great. But it, if not... This is also my romantic, romantic take, my romanticism on, on 2022. Um, mm -hmm. I understand this is not the reality or like the mode that people... Um, Want they live want to live their life by? I just like feel like uh, as a Paris fan, I'd be very disappointed. It's just weird where the where <laughs> they are directing their uh, emotions to because like I've seen a mm. lot of people blame Avala for saying like why mm. did you get get a mass out of here when you know you are you are there to allocate resources. And you don't do that at the whim of your own opinions. You ask sure. around people that are impacted by this, right? Mm -hmm. So to only put that on her is also a weird, weird one, right? Once again, 100%. like you just decouple to those situations, think through it rationally. Like if you really think, like yes, the ultimate decision is on her, so the most responsibility mm. is there. How do people come to conclusions? That's like, and I say this like, maybe I I'll, I'll I I try to contact get uh, Amaz in contact with teams after that happened to him, and I mm. think I thought it was unwarranted, and he should have had the head coach position for another year if the resources were there. And sure. once again, I'm just operating on outside information, right? Um, so or like whatever I can infer from the outside. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think like Amaz is a, a really solid guy and I think he definitely is right that the mental aspect of esports is highly underrated and that yes. someone like him can can definitely turn the tide you gotta find believers in that story though dude agreed agreed you, so, and that's, that's, that's the million dollar question is how you get players to buy in right like and that's that's the key the truth is you, you need you need like all types of coaches on your team to succeed. Yes. I think, you know, you need Infinite. emotional leaders, you need strategic leaders, um, mm -hmm. and you need some babysitters in there too. Ideally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. Cause some, cause some kids need some spanking. 100%. So we're bringing that back. People say, nope. don't hit your kids. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm not convinced. I'm on the fence on that one. Um, one one know. final thing, one minor minor little joke. I, I was really trying to find a way to cut in with the decoupling, but uh, you know I find it very uh, shocking that nobody brought up the most uh, disenfranchised player that was uh, seemingly cut from their team prior to even starting. Uh, we talk about Mir, we talk about Naga and Wub. Like, what happened to Kooky guys? Are we just selling him up river? Like York, what uh, what gives? Homie just he's shows up on the, the roster. I, he's coaching, he's but you team. know, uh, no, isn't he still on the roster when you look in the Overwatch League website? Still I I haven't checked recently, but uh, as there. per week one, he was. So uh, what happened, guys? Why aren't we mad about Kooky? And we want to see uh, the biggest brain Lucio player yeah, in like, the league. The whole, Come on now, <laughs> the whole get amazed. Yeah, you wanted a Lucio player, didn't you? Uh, anyway, yeah, right. Um. The whole Gita Mesa situation is interesting as well because now, because he's he's piping up a little bit, yeah, and, and fair enough, he he can do that if he wants to. He's justified. Um, the people, the the general public's like, oh, you know, I can't believe he got, I can't believe Avala would drop Gita Mesa, yada yada yada. But the situation is, she had to make a choice between one one of them. You can't, yeah. She she couldn't keep both J Mac and Gita Mesa. That was a, that was the hand she got dealt. And she could only keep one of them. Oh, you got to cut um, both of them to the salary that's... Uh, what's the assistant coach called? I don't know. And that's they also... Have an coach. Fucked. I'm learning that they have an assistant coach right more, now. More... Um, something with them. A boogie? Am I remembering that right yeah. now? I find out for you right Sun. now. Yep. It is. Is it? It is my boogie. Um, so anyway. What it was I saying? So she had to pick between one of them. She couldn't keep the other one. So, right. and I think that's like a lose lose situation. That's literally like damned if you do, damned if you mm -hmm. don't. And this is where like, Yeska's message of like you know people directing their anger to Vala is kind of like uh, it doesn't seem right. I feel like she's the messenger being shot right now, which is to say that um, no matter who she picked, you'd, people would find a way to blame to place blame yeah. because sadly, the thing about your win rate and your ability to win games 
and do well in the Overwatch League. It comes down to roster quality, and roster quality is heavily correlated with budget. Heavily. The more you spend, the better your roster probably is. Mm -hmm. Right? With maybe some diminishing returns, like, uh, you know... (laughs) You know, at some stage, if you're paying a fuck ton of money for certain people, it, it, it might not make sense anymore. But generally speaking, you know, if you're spending more, you can start affording a better yes. players and better players will be attracted to join your team. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. So so it really does, doesn't even really matter who who you choose as your coach to remain. Because if your roster quality doesn't improve, you're probably not winning anyway. So here's here's the conundrum. If you choose, you choose J-Mac as you have and get amazed as the one that got left out, your team's losing. Everyone's like saying, "Oh, I can't believe you got rid of Get Amazed. Uh, Vala fucked up." But then, if you choose Get Amazed, you cut J Mac. Everyone be like, "Oh, I can't believe you cut J Mac. J J Mac was the yep. uh, he was, was the guy, operation yeah. last year. Yep. J Mac was the guy who 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 wrote the thesis. You know, I can't believe you cut that guy. You know, people would find a way to shit on her no matter what mm-hmm. because there's no there's no correct decision here. No matter who you cut, your got your team's still gonna suck next year. And then when it does, people will blame you for it because you cut the wrong person, even though it didn't fucking matter who you cut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it actually made zero difference. I, w- I will say, um, we gotta have a door open to not just be a Vala apologist. If Whoop sucks more than Naga, that's her fault. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. And, you know, I'll, I'll, put my, yeah, I'll put my neck on the line for that. Not too much, just a little bit. <laughs> enough that I can still, whoop, I can still like, sit back and save myself. <laughs> but enough so to say that, like, yeah, like... I'll defend Paris up until the point to say that I respect them for wanting to improve their roster. Mm. But I, but what I respect is that they're taking a gamble on it yeah. because they could have chosen not to take a gamble on it, but then they would have, that would have been the easy way out. Wouldn't it? That would be the, mm. uh, that would be the status quo. Ah, who cares? We'll just lose option. Right. And they chose the option that would give them a better chance. It is a gamble because you don't know you are rolling dice. He is a, he is a rookie player. Who yep. knows? Maybe he will suck. And the, the sad part about it is if he does suck, People will unnecessarily dislike him because he's the guy that replaced Naga, right? Which he doesn't deserve. Wub is just a player. He he's just trying to live his fucking dream to be an Overwatch League player. Mm-hmm. Not his fault. And nope. also, people will be like, "Oh, you guys fucked. You should have. You should have kept Naga. You, I can't believe you guys are still losing." And the worst part about all that is, they might still lose anyway. Even even though Wub might be an upgrade over Naga. Let's say yeah. Wub does perform much better than Naga. Their win rate might not improve. Because guess what? It's still a team game, even though people like just all, all the casual like, oh, oh, my creativity and my teamwork has gone Overwatch too. Yeah, funny. There's still a lot of teamwork, isn't there? Because even upgrading one player might not give you the success because the the team is just overall roster quality wise, yes, probably still not good enough. But, but people will be extremely results biased about it. Mm-hmm. They won't they won't analyze the nuance and look into it and say like, well, is what a better play than Naga? They'll simply look at the ones and the zeros or the Ws and the Ls and see that oh. Paris still losing. Yep. Just going to say that Paris made the wrong call then. When it's just like, it didn't, pro- it, f- it probably doesn't matter. If you kept Wa- Naga, if you ki- if you put Wub in there, if you have Get Amazed, if you have J-Mag, it probably mm. makes no fucking difference. Your win rate's probably still the same at the end of the season. But they're all just yep. going to blame Avala anyway. Pretty much. So, what do you do? I think, I think there is a natural transition. I don't know if we're headed that way um, to talk about some of the teams because I think there is a solution. It's not an easy solution, but it definitely beats the hell out of whatever I saw last week. I don't know if we're ready to talk about the teams yet, so I'll hand my olive I mean, range to you. Is there any final? I just, I just want to put things into some perspective. No, the agree. only, the only take and perspective that I truly do not agree with and that I cannot stand by at all hmm. is this like... How do I say this? Because there is a there is a contingent, probably quite a large one actually, of people that just feel like, oh, Paris just fucked Naga, and it's and yes. some yeah he, yeah. he they kind of did yes they kind of did fuck Naga, but there's a there's a there's a certain level of that tank that gets into a territory I'm not comfortable with and I don't like, and that territory is 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 somehow like just like demonizing paris like they're fucking evil or something like yeah oh there's very evil people in paris like this very evil organization they fucked naga what do you think do you think it was their goal do you think that's what they set out to do do you yeah. think like they have some vendetta against naga like what they're they 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 enjoy fucking what what is this like come on like inspired against him. yeah yeah you think this is like you think this is a conspiracy theory like yeah what what, what is going on like this is these people are trying to improve their team. Like this, this, this is not some fucking. Mm-hmm. This is not you know. This is not a ritual. This, this, this is this is this is not a fucking Salem witch trial here. They fucking put Naga at the stake and burnt him. It's not what it is, yep. right? 
Um, other player gets to have a dream too. This is the other thing is like, this is sports, man. You can just tell there are people that just don't know sports, man. It's just like, yeah. do, you, you guys, do you guys not know sports? Like in sports, people get cut, traded and fucking whatever on their roster all the time. This is so normal. So normal. Yeah. And I'm not saying, and people say like, and, and you know, when I say that, people are like, oh, you know, wow, Avril, you're so corporate. I'm like, I'm not saying I don't feel bad for Naga. I do feel bad for him. Mm -hmm. But just the way you, the world. You know, but this is like this. Now I have to go back to the fucking Monty Overwatch League is not an anime thing. This is what he's talking about. It's not an anime because teams are gonna make decisions that will improve their roster, or well, at least that what they believe will improve their roster. Um, it's this isn't this isn't the fucking you know Paris Eternal anime where everyone's you know everyone's buddy buddy and friends and you know this is the friendship you know magical flowers and butterflies. Bobby Dreamboat Mickey Mouse show. You know, it's mm -hmm. a fucking sport. Please yep. get a hold of yourselves. It's a sport. People are going to get cut. At the what happens? At the same time, if, you're, just did it. if you were arguing that uh, Paris is now worse off and have a salient argument for it, be my guest. That's that's legitimate. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. But you have to explain to me why you think they're worse off. Yes. And why... You and and it has to be better than oh well how what covered Naga's hero pool what what hero pool he plays three projectile heroes that's his hero pool mm. I don't know one thing I will stick my neck out on is I did see some very um interesting way to interpret his stats from last year all I'll say is you can they're all public you can go look at them they're fine mm. it's a it's about how you interpret those stats no he was good last year I, uh, he was fine. I think he's a fine player. I think they're all, they're all fine players, but you know, I'm 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 not the biggest believer in European talent, and I you know I enjoy <laughs> it when players like Hardy can come out and, and power sure. because I'm like, damn, he shows you know, up. Maybe, yeah. maybe they do have some good talent in Europe still. And I've, I know Kev's is good. You don't have to fucking come at me. With that. <laughs> <laughs> they they pick um, the one outlier like with the bit Kipster. <laughs> Uh, I, I, listen, I know. <laughs> I, please. Um, no, my point is, is like, you know, you have to be realistic with your expectations about this kind of roster. And I don't know. I, I feel like they, I feel like the, they just fucked up the optics because it did seem a little, a little out of the nowhere. It's, it's because the optically it seems knee jerky, doesn't it? It seems like mm -hmm. oh, they lost two games after week one. They lost two games. Yes. So logistically, they can't even do that that quickly. How long do you think it takes to get a new player like Wub in? Mm -hmm. Consider that they have to reallocate Naga's budget over. They have to get Wub into a team house. He has to sign the fucking contract. He has to travel there. Mm -hmm. he, all this shit has to be, all, you know, the league has to approve it. You, you, like, this doesn't happen overnight, fellas. Yeah. This doesn't happen in 24 hours, I tell you that. It's not like they lose the second game and J-Max and they're like, well, right. I guess we can get rid of Naga. Who's, who's available? No, they probably, they were looking at Wub for ages. They were looking at Wub for yeah. a reasonable amount of time to get him in at this stage. And it just seems like the timing is like the timing is obviously bad. Like mm. it's, so, the timing looks like correlation is not causation, guys. Just remember that one. The timing looks like they cut him after two weeks because of bad performances. But remember, he's been scrimming with them for two months as well. And beyond mm. that, like, who knows when they first got in contact with Wub? Could have been sure. could have been a fair while ago. The thing is, they they what haven't up? scrimmed a long yeah. time, right? Like, I think five days, six days. It was the sixth day when we had the interview. That's how long they have been. Wub? Yeah. You mean Wub didn't scrim with them long? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying talks, the rest I'm of the, sure. the rest of the yeah. team has scrimmed during the alpha, which I know because I fucking watch their scrims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is, is it's not a knee jerk, oh, Naga played bad after two, get two games. It's like, mm. no, there was two months of scrimming that you guys forgot about. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in the alpha. very true, yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. And also, by the way, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to redirect blame because i'm I, I just don't i just think people need to reconsider the blame rather than like redirect it like you have to blame somebody uh because yeah. it seems like we we exist in a culture in 2022 where you know somebody has to get fucking planted on a stake somebody has to die on a cross every single day for some reason uh you know someone's head has constantly got a roll for reason um just an aggro my point is is mind. that consider that coaching decisions usually have a huge play in talent acquisition and sure. and benching players, cutting players, and acquiring new talent is either heavily influenced, if not outright decided by coaching staff entirely. Mm -hmm. You know, in some teams, the coaching staff decide 100 percent of that. The, the the management don't say it. Don't management is just like, okay, cool. 
as long as managers just sign off to say, do we have the money for this? Yes or no? That's it. They don't. Mm. They otherwise have no say in who the fuck is on the roster. Some management probably have a lot more say. Like I don't, I'm not going to say who because I don't know exactly, but sure. some teams management might have a lot might might have more input. I don't know which side of things Paris land on between Avala and JMac, but mm-hmm. you know for the people that are just going after Avala, consider that like it's pro- JMac probably had a huge part to play. Now I'm not saying you should go after JMac. Nope. I'm just saying like you know. There's more to it's this. It's kind of weird. Like, you know, Avala's just become the scapegoat. I don't want to be yeah. too, again, back to what you said, I don't want to be too hard of an Avala apologist, but I'm just, it's just like, you know, I'm just trying to speak facts here in terms of she just seems to be getting scapegoated really hard for trying to play a hand, trying to play a bad hand that she's been dealt, you know? Yeah. True. Yeah. It's not easy. And, you know, credit to her. I think she announced uh, prior to the season start that she was also uh, taking on like photography and content duties as well. Like as well as that... translating. They don't right. have a translator. She is their translator. They they fucking fired their translator. They being Paris yeah. Eternal, the, the org, because they couldn't afford it. And now Avala is the manager and the translator. And apparently, mm-hmm. as you're saying, other things, too. I yeah, think so. like, I'm pretty it, sure she does the does. CDL stuff as well, right? Uh, yeah, no, she, probably. She manages more. Yep, correct. She does more than just Overwatch League. She's the reason why she's in Dallas. She was actually in Dallas last year. For those that don't know, so while the rest of the team was wherever they were in Europe, she was mm. in Dallas last year. Why? Because she ma- she does more than just the Overwatch League team. Mm. Yeah. So again, oh, it, it goes up they the chain. Her thin. They are spreading her thin. Yes. So if if you are of the anti-Avala crowd there's there's a little bit more grace to be given um if if you know you, that's where you stand you don't, in a weird you way. don't have to be pro Avala. i'm not saying like oh. everyone should love her and we, we should go back nope. to where we were x amount of time ago where like sure. she was the darling princess of reddit but like you're allowed to be neutral you're allowed to reconsider mm-hmm. like hang on maybe it's not all Avala's fault you don't have to love her but you can you can you can lay off the hate a little bit after mm-hmm. by realizing the circumstances Sure. shit is is tough it's not easy um and that's not the only gm that does a lot i'll tell you that yep. right now that's also very true um but yeah shall we okie doke an hour and a half in we get to finally talk about the games <laughs> <laughs> who wants to talk about the paris game huh um, i do you do kind of you actually sort of well go ahead then um so quick talk quick point with paris because i think you 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 planted a nice little seed in my head that i think london are specifically doing well um funnily enough you mentioned hottie and, and talking about the european talent and whatnot um if paris and a lot of these lower budget teams are kind of strict or are stringent in that way on who they can sign and what they can sign and where they can allocate their resources right And if we're all in agreement that there is at least some positive correlation in terms of roster budget and amount of wins to maximize the number of wins that a small market team can do means you need a very clear vision, a la the London Spitfire, right? I think they are drafting the blueprint for these smaller market teams to maximize their roster who cannot and will not be of the caliber to compete with the Torontos, with the Gladiators, with the Glads. With the Dallas Fuel, right? I said glass twice, but you get my point. You can't go pound to pound with Kevster. Ain't gonna happen. You can't go pound to pound with like Prime Muse. It's not gonna happen, right? You can't go pound to pound with Chumrog, Twilight. You can name all the stars. It's just not gonna happen. So how do you leverage around that to try to be competitive in a way, you kind of have to cheese, right? You have to do the London. You have to do the Chengdu. You have to get a little silly, a little crazy, a little haha funny time, right? That's not what I saw out of Paris. What I saw was, hey, mm-hmm. that Dallas fuel comp looks pretty tasty. I'm going to try and get on that Zarya tip. And it was ass. That was not good. Period. The end. The only way I got entertainment out of that is seeing how badly they could rotate their ultimates. Stop. <laughs> you are overthinking this. <laughs> whatever your whatever your players can do draft around that pick your heroes around what they can do and try to find an identity that works for you not chase after the dallas fuel not chase after what the, some of the best teams are doing because you're not going to be able to compete with them if paris well, wants to succeed in the long run they have to have an identity ultimately you're chasing somebody because in no a matter way yes. what pump you're playing some teams playing it better than you agree so you're chasing somebody no Agreed. matter what so I, I think you can't avoid chasing a team at this rate 
because your your of coach course. is going to look like, okay, so who's got a good composition and what can we play and um, how can we play it better? And they'll have to look at another team that's doing better than them. And ultimately, that will always be somebody. Agreed. Um, yes, it is. It is not soon. entirely like it's not as easy as I make it sound like. I'm asking you to just come up with something on the fly. Of course, that's difficult. And maybe that is equally as difficult. But I think it is the better choice than trying to chase the the average than it is to try to find something else that yeah. works for you. Yes, I agree. There is always probably somebody to chase. Um, but I think there is a better match for the Paris Eternal right now than trying to adapt to these crazy schools of thought. I, I hope that they find their base. They find an identity that works for them moving forward. And I'm not even just talking about this stage. I'm talking about the league, the season as a whole um, that they can take and run with. We've seen teams Atlanta, uh, teams like Chengdu find success with this. Is, your, is this your highlighted game of the week? Are we talking about Paris? Um, if, if we want it to be, it can be for me. That's fine. Oh, I was asking. I was like, <laughs> what, what game was um, No, it, definitely not my highlight. If anything, that was kind of a low light. Um, and I like, hate to bag on Paris because I know they're going through it. All these Toronto um, points I was going to bring up. And now, you know what? The audience is going to be left <laughs> wanting. All the Toronto fans like, no. They're looking good. I will say for a team that I, I really gave a lot of hard time to, I have been pleasantly surprised. The Toronto do not look that bad. I've. If anything, they look pretty good. So it I mean, that bad. They're like they're pounding around. Toronto look good. Yeah, great. they they're look good. Winning. Yes, they're doing fantastic. They look um, good. I'm I'm still slightly uneasy. I need to see them. Like I think by next week, I will have a much more confident take on them. Um, but so far so good. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um, also, I definitely have points to bring up about Houston, Florida. But you know, if we want to we'll move that. to their we'll next, do that. But quickly. Was it a police siren or a fire truck? I believe that was a police siren. There is a fire station Wait. like around the block. Takes so, so bad he's getting taken in. Maybe. <laughs> Could be. Could be an illegal uh, federal maneuver. And uh, maybe the feds are going after you. Who knows? <laughs> but it seems like it has died down now. So I read a, a, uh, I, I was going through a Reddit thread today, uh, not mm -hmm. Overwatch related, um, about crime. And Detroit was mentioned. <laughs> Hello, yes. <laughs> Here, uh, that's us. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Houston, who was again? Houston Mayhem. Go on. Houston Mayhem. It was a crime, I will say. This was a criminal underperformance from a Florida Mayhem. I still will beat the drum that they should have won. Um, I had them winning 3-1. Um, but there was a, another one of these haha, uh, -ha, silly, funny moments where... Uh, I think I think they did a little bit of an overthink. I think they did a little bit of a roadhog on Gibraltar, but in a different way this time. Talking about the Sombra? Uh, yeah, talking about Sombra. Um, I don't think I need to preach to the choir. I think Avril and I have talked about this, but... Uh, AP Poo Poo Hero? It is a PP Poo Poo uh, Hero, and I do not like hey, it. What happened to all those pros? So, oh, Sombra's going to be overpowered. <laughs> she, was, she was barely changed, bro. Did, she, did anything get Sombra changed? I don't from, think so. Not from, from her review? rework. Oh, sorry, there was one so. thing that did change. The EMP... Was it, was it the EMP damage went from fifty to forty? I think wasn't it? I have no idea. I Something went from honestly to, couldn't. Care oh less. no 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 no! The opportunist, the, the passive damage, not the ah, EMP. So the EMP stayed the same. The, the mark. right click, the manual hack, the mark, the hack. It's got a name. It's called hack. Whatever. The hack bonus damage went from fifty percent to forty percent. So they didn't nerf that. Sick. <laughs> but even but I'm gonna say right now, even if it was fifty percent, I don't think she still be ass. It, it takes too oh. long to ramp into it. Again, the, my biggest gripe with this match in particular was you're operating under the assumption that you have one win condition, that one win condition, because I don't see Florida breaking out the What's somber the against condition? anybody else, is to hack the Doomfist like it's Overwatch 1, and you have exactly one second to blow up the uh. Doomfist and kill him, or now we have worse Tracer on our team, right? I'll tell it's, you what. Oh, God. I'll throw them a bone. I'm a bone thrower today. Uh, the bone I'll throw mayhem is okay. you actually don't hack the Doomfist to kill them. Well, you do, but you specifically when you don't just randomly hack the Doomfist, you must hack him during his block. That's when you hack him because it cancels his block. Sure. And if you cancel a Doom's power block, you've ruined his cycling of cooldowns. Agreed. Right? Because the way the Doomfist cycles cooldowns is you might engage with one cooldown. Mm. Uh, and then if you want to be aggressive, you use the other cooldown to go aggressive again. And then yep. your power block, and then you wait for your first cooldown to come off. And then you exit, right? 
That's kind of mm-hmm. how the cycling goes. Uh, and if he doesn't get his full duration of the power block, doesn't get a cycle. And he's literally fucking standing there like Doomfist Overwatch 1, just like, oh, I don't know what to do. So effectively, he is hacked like Doomfist in Overwatch 1 because he's got nothing online. So agree. Everything's on cooldown. So there 100%. is that window. But, there, um, there is it's a window. A very specific, tiny window. Yes. It's a very, very, like, very specific line of play that you have to do. And that, to me, doesn't justify Sombra. No. Because, like, because you know what? Tracer can do. Tracer can just kill him. Like, why? She can also this- kill the Ana. Why do this weird, like, you know, oh, you know, we're just trying to counterplay through hack. How about you just counterplay by killing him with Tracer? That's what everyone else right. is doing. Yes. It's, it was so needless. And I'm more charitable. Like, it would be one thing if they did, like, Winston Sombra Soldier. Like, okay, I'm I'm a little bit more charitable there. If you want to pick the worst tracer, that's fine. They did do that. They and did Winston Soldier. They did play that a little bit, but they also played the Zarya pick, which I think is a just fundamental misunderstanding of like what she is supposed to do for this for in this meta right now. Where like not only are you playing reactive because you've picked Sombra, but now you're even more reactive because you don't have another DPS pick to warrant any space creation. At least with the Reaper, I can make silly haha funny TP plays and double bubble my 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 Edison player and have him make the space, right? I can Reaper tank. You can't Sombra tank. What are you going to, Tracer tank? Maybe, I don't know. At least I'd be a little bit more interested in that. But, oh, God, this game was so winnable. I feel like Toronto has laid out the blueprint to beat Houston in the preview. Come to, this is brickable. This is, this is defeatable. Very brickable game. God, this was frustrating. I think the Sombra brick down. was such a bro. Brick down. I don't you think any team should be picking Sombra right now, period. You know what? If they, if, they, if they kept Mirror on this team, they would have a 100% win rate. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, uh, I'm just saying, like, you know, it's weird how no one no one gave Mayhem shit for that, but they're crying foul for Naga. I don't, anyway, past that subject. Uh, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to bring heat on Mayhem. I don't think they deserve that. I'm just, uh, I'm just, making a comparison here because it's, it's weird to me the double standards that exist um because both teams frankly both teams made the right call that's where i'll stand yes. but yeah mayhem like you know, the team that i thought checkmate figured it out because he was playing tracer most yes. of the series. he was on tracer most of the series um i don't mostly. i don't understand why they felt like they needed to change to that did they feel the tracers stopped working i because i and not like, in the Va- Vancouver game. They fucking smurfed on him. Granted, it's Vancouver, yeah, so, and we'll get to them, but so it was Tracer no, all there. Yeah, yeah. so we, we've established the Checkmate Tracer, and yes. yet he decided to go Sombra. Maybe yeah. you're right. Maybe this was a, was it maybe a potentially a coaching call. I think so. Because I, 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 I refuse to believe Checkmate made the call where he's like, no, no, guys, I feel better on the Sombra. Now, that's Cap, because we've seen his shit Tracer, and it was dominating. Yes. Um, Unless he's just scared of Eris, you know, <laughs> But uh, I don't know, man up. No one else. You know, other other traces aren't. They just ran at him. Um, no, I, I feel like it. It maybe it is just a you know getting a little too smart here. Which is like, oh no, we're gonna try and hack the doom, like you said. Yeah. Also, by the way, EMP fucking sucks. E- oh e- god, EMP what a is, dog. Ugh. EMP is top three worst <laughs> in the game currently. God, no is shit. it bad? I think it's top three. I think Infrasight. What it was Infrasight, legitimately no. N- Unironically, a better ultimate than can I? Right oh, one hundred percent. Can I run something by you though? Because I think that like this is the only value I think it gives is like you hold it for the entire. You literally don't press Q and you just threaten the Lucio player with EMP. You just what go go ahead and beat. Go ahead and beat. Cancel beat. It doesn't oh. remove beat anymore. No, it doesn't. It only it so it removes forty percent of your current HP. So it removes forty percent of whatever the total HP you have from beaters. Oh, it's worse than I thought. All right, never mind. Yeah, it is. So, <laughs> oh, here's another way. Uh, I think I might have already said this, but I'll just say it again, just in case you mm. know. EMP damage, the forty percent HP damage, is affected also by armor, mitigated by the thirty percent damage reduction on armor. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. that's nuts. That is nuts. That, that ultimate is so bad. Yeah, I think it you told us that like last week, and it was nuts. PP poo poo. It is One so bad. The worst ultimate in the game. Fucking awful. And you're, and you're picking that over Pulse Bomb, mind you. Yeah. Just, just keep that in mind. You want to know? You want to? You want to know what ultimates I think are worse than that? Just above it is Meteor Strike, and just above that is Bastion's Artillery. Yep. Bastion's Artillery, straight up worst ultimate in the game. Yep. Then it's Meteor Strike, and then it's this. 
And before mm. anyone says, oh, Meteor Strike, great escape tool, cool. Winston also <laughs> has one, but he can also cool. go in and do everything else. Uh, yep. It's it's like, oh, wow, you're, you're, it's one of those things like, oh, your, your ultimate only lets you escape? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, yeah. that, it's, that, it's that no maidens meme, but it's like, oh, no offensive? Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 And by no means are we like tier. We're, we're not judging a, a hero's pick based on their ultimate uh, viability or efficacy. What we're saying is the pick demands that you play reactive, which has proven not to be a successful like line in Overwatch history. It demands that you operate in a very difficult time window, which has never been proven to be a successful line in Overwatch history. And if you don't do that, you have no other like play. What are you going to do? Hack the Lucio? How is that a win condition? What do you do? Like, I'm, not, I'm not saying Doomfist sucks because Meteor Strike sucks, or am no. I? Doomfist does kind of suck right now. <laughs> what do. But what I am saying is like, I mean, it, it, it works in Doomfist kit, but it's basically like, here's an ultimate that only lets me escape, is my, yes. my argument. Yes. But back to Sombra, yeah, EMP is just like, how many teams just eat an EMP and just like, don't even give a fuck? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what, like, uh, the only way to make EMP a good ability is again, is just to make it a six second hack once more, you know, yes. like, a, like the old one. I don't know. I, I've I explained in my uh, Sombra video why EMP sucks. Go and watch that if you care. Um, but yeah, I mean, Florida. I think someone has had really good looks on yes. picks that are not Zarya. I'm not saying that Zarya sucked. No. You're right about the whole Zarya synergy thing. That didn't make a lot of sense either. Um, I think all. Florida should have just looked at... Uh, when was their game? Was their game before or after Washington's game? Because Washington, after. I feel, after... Come this on, was bro. Sunday Washington, versus Friday. Washington, Washington throttled so Atlanta. They 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 revealed the blueprint. That's this is how you fuck Doom. Right, right. It's a blueprint titled "This is how you fuck Doom." Yeah. And Florida just like, no, we can we we we're just gonna ignore that. It, it's it's mind boggling, and and by no means is this like a I think checkmate Sombra was bad. I just don't think the hero should be played. Period. Right. It's not like a. I just think it was a. I think Florida, as much as I will give them credit for being a little creative, I think this was just a complete just swing and a miss. I also don't think that teams in general and Florida is uh, leading the way in this way uh, are using TAC Visor correctly. I am tired. I am so tired. Avril, please, you have to help me here. I am so tired of people running in with TAC Visor and either getting nuked or slept into no value. First, I have to know what you think the correct way is, and then we'll and then we'll talk about it. As would, as what, gross what like? as this is, <laughs> as as nasty as this is, and I hate saying this, I kind of just want to use it for space, like a, a zoning tool. <laughs> honest, I honest um, to God, I think. Yeah, here's here's the thing. Visor and Nano Visor is slowly becoming the next Dragon Blade. And what I mean by that mm-hmm. is, here's what happens. Here's, here's Genji game plan. This is also maybe explaining why Genji pick rate is about to go down. Yes. Uh, also because Trace is starting to get really good again. Um, is, even though nothing's changed, um, is that, except that people just figured things out, is that um, uh, basically Genji pulls, Genji, you, you, when you don't pull Blade, people are looking at you, but they can't kill you because you're poking from a distance, you're fine. Yes. And you, you know, you're deflecting, you're doing your things, you're dashing away, you're not aggressive, you're not committing. Pull blade, you instantly commit. Once you commit, you're in the middle of the enemy team, everyone looks at you and you die. Mm-hmm. Five people turn around, you die. Um, visor is becoming a blade because, like you say, people are just running in with Visor and everyone, five people look at the soldier and he dies. Yep. I don't know what, what, what the correct way is because the other problem is, is when it goes well, you get the 5k Dragon Blade. Sure, when it goes yeah. well, you get the 5k Visor. Uh, and that nano, nano helps you because you get 400 effective HP. You're like a tank mm-hmm. now. You get to run it with 400 HP. It makes sense. Um, I don't know. I, I think um, I think actually I think flanking is the right way. I think flanking is the only yeah like super guaranteed high value way to visor because even if teams turn around for you, they've at least turned around, which gives the rest sure. of you a chance to do something. So, but none of yeah, none of this none of this up the middle shit. I'm tired of just up the middle running through your team. I think I saw Glister yeah. do it. I've seen. Um, I'm gonna put a high dollar amount on Hydron doing it in this game. Dude, like, dude, 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 if only if only Get Amaze was here, he he would have talked Glister better. <laughs> the, the thing is, like, I feel like so. Uh, Advisor is not even 
Visor is now psychological warfare. That's what it's for. Like, it, maybe you can, like, scare some poor schmuck in, in to giving up his beat. He very likely doesn't need to, because, like, all it, all that, uh, that needs to happen is, like, you know, like, soldier is like, oh, I got free, a uh, few free vision of the Anna. Nice, let's visor and dance so I can avoid the, the sleep. And then there's like a, a fat monkey going like, what you doing, bro? Why are you looking at my girl, man? What up? <laughs> <laughs> and it's impossible to just kill her. Just like, a, and I mean, even then, like this has been effectively like a glorified diva bomb at how well people have been positioning against it. They hear, you know, whatever the hell Soldier 76 says these days and they all hit for the hills. And like half the time still, they're just standing there like, I got you on my side. still the same. Sure. Whatever. But I play with the sound half off anyways, or my, I'm going deaf, whatever, whatever excuse I can come up with. Like everybody's positioning, <laughs> everybody's positioning so well that like, it feels like a coin flip at the time. Nothing happens other than zoning. Unironically, one of Hydron's best like tack visors in this match yeah. was I think on new queen street at the end where he's zoning them off the point so they can get better positioning. Like, dude, ah, oh. that's, that's the, that's the thing. Like this is, and honestly, let's call a spade a spade. And this is not necessarily on Hydron, but could also be like no. a miscommunication. I think it's the league. How, um, how the uh, how the mayhem internally communicate? Like what? Because like Visor needs deterrence from your like other threats in order to like divide attention, right? Like you can't just sure, go like sure. I'm a Visor with like a, a, a nano. I'm, I'm making it happen for myself. In that Genji Blade's probably even better. Um, mm -hmm. getting shit off the ground by yourself. But, like, you need to tie up uh, the rest of the squad and then probably find a flank so you can can get the tail, right? Yep. But my god, it was, like, was... I I'm going to specifically say, not Hydron, but Florida Mayhem Soldier yeah, feeding like their brains out, bro. Like, <laughs> that shit was just, like, it was basically a dinner bell and Hydron was the yeah. feast. Like yes, that that shit Real basically quick, never Yiska, worked. Is Yiska roboting out? For yes, I think Yiska has has molded his voice mod into existence, and now it, he's slightly Darth Vader. I, I let me let me f try to fix. Just go ahead. Yeah, go ahead hey, and play with that. Me, the good thing tell, is it's not going to be on the tell recording. Me that you are my father. Yeah, so right. does it work now? Yes, you're good. Okay, right. It, it's not going to be on a recording, and the uh, listeners will won't. You'll just never know. You're talking yeah, that's about, fine. No big deal. I, I'll, <laughs> I'll just pretend you are hallucinating because you heard someone visor. Um, mm, mm, mm. But I think that was a problem. I think also, like what what check? Uh, sorry, someone told me the player. Yeah, um, but who is that's never going to get old. That huh? they felt it, it was a mostly an execution issue. Now, okay, hey. you, you you guys ready for me to get on my second hill of the day? Okay, right, and I think my now my internet is actually legitimately crapping out. We're, we're good, bro. Okay, you remember the control map that they played? Mm -hmm. Li Zhang. How did that go? I don't remember. They won with the Zarya. They won yes, with they Zarya. won with Zarya. Yes, they got no. They won with the Zarya and the and the, the Sombra, and they got baited yeah. into thinking it was good. Right. Yeah. Was it? It was a 2-0, right? It wasn't just a 2-0. It wasn't a particularly close 2-0. Mm -hmm. Okay? I would almost say they stomped that. Okay? Sure. Now, which two maps did they lose? They lost push. Oh. <laughs> this match ended 3-2. Uh, yes. They stomped control. And because the rule set has changed, they are not playing to control that match. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's really hard for me to feel this is not a competitive integrity issue. Mm. Like, of course, the rule set is the same for everyone, but I'm not sure if the same match transported into next week with, with every atom in every player's body being the same, but just the rule mm. set being different, that this match doesn't clearly go a different way. Sure. Right? So you're saying the two pushes fuck them? Yes. But let me let me give you let me give you the the you know, the take that's going to come in that everyone's going to say is like, well, then shouldn't Florida be better at push? <laughs> uh, which, see the which, be, which you have to answer, to be fair. You sure. have to address yeah. that. Sure. Yeah. 
I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that argument. Like, as long as the rule set stays the same for the entire season, the issue is that it seems yes. like we're alternating, which yes. is, I see, I think is needless. Yeah. Um, wow. And I think the bell curve oh, argument yeah. is we start with why isn't Florida better at push? And we get to this is a competitive integrity issue. And we get to where I'm at. And I'm saying, why don't they just play Tracer? What is? No, no, no. I don't know if I, I don't know if I really <laughs> see the competitive integrity issue because I, you know, I I hate to be on the side of like maybe Florida should just be better at push. No, I don't. Well, for starters, I don't think push is a good game mode. I don't think we should be alternating. I don't think we should be sure. playing push one five at all. But because we are and everyone is, I don't know if they're allowed to. But how is it not sucky that? If the weeks were rev like different and Florida has a, an easier week and them sucking at push is significantly less of an issue, like let's say they're playing Vancouver in, in the push week, that mm -hmm. then doesn't matter. And then they play Outlaws in the control week and they so win that a, match. There's, so there's a little bit of an RNG issue here where like, mm -hmm. let's say you're saying if, because they're weaker on push, but they got their harder game on the week that they're weaker on push. Right. Whereas if they got Houston in the week where they only play push once but play control twice, they would have won. And if they push, if they play Vancouver this week, then it doesn't fucking matter because they win anyway. I see what you're saying. Um, now, <sighs> can can I uh, add another question? Who does this appeal to? <laughs> Other than the one developer that developed the two maps, and we're once again like trying to make people feel important by I, introducing I shit game modes than, that nobody really enjoys playing. Other than backbone, probably, probably, probably did take more than one person. But um, the what I'll say is like, obviously they're trying to. Here, here's what I appreciate the league is trying to do. Mm -hmm. They are trying to not have control be the most important game mode anymore. Oh, now I don't think now I don't think push should be the most important game mode either. But they they're trying to shake things up so that when we're, we're not just you know this is arguably the worst solution been. they could have taken my friends like it's not it, it is a band-aid look it is a band-aid it is a band-aid fucking mm. solution because we there's one there's one thing we talked about pre-show before we even started recording you know that's where the real shit goes down and we talked about the fact that we actually had five game modes but two cp died and yeah. the more i see push and this is this is some blasphemy of some sacrilege coming out the more I see push, the more I want two CP back. Oh, Legit, here we though. go. Yeah, he's saying. I, and I don't hate it. Just to support you for a second, I don't hate it, but I think there are some like fundamental things that need to be changed about the map architecture of two CP. I don't think the game mode was inherently bad. I think no. the maps were bad. Well, the game the mode. The push is maps are bad too. Bad I'm. I don't disagree. I don't disagree, but there I think are, I'm more charitable to those than the choky it, nonsense it, that there are TCP gave us. Fundamental issues in both game modes. The fundamental issues sure. I think in TCP are a little bit easier to address. They're easier to address because uh, yes, at yeah. least I think they're linear and in, in why they're bad. But like mm -hmm. push is exponential in, in some of the shit that goes on. Very messy, yeah. and uh, that's that's exponential is like it, holy shit that it, that can be that can be a, a tough one. Here's mm. the difference between. Uh, between push and um, 2CP. In 2CP, a bad team can drag out the map into me having to care until the very last moment by throwing points on the uh, uh, bodies on the points and like keeping the stall going forever. And that's yeah. really tiresome. For push, they front loaded the suck. And once it's three um, team fights going in one direction, especially if it's the team that's the, uh, uh, the one to expect it to win the map. I am now off to the toilets because this shit is decided as fuck. Three team yeah. fights coming back from that is feels yeah. absolutely impossible. Needless to say that the map architecture actually forces compositional uh, variety way down because look at that ma Mayhem match where in the specifically the first map, I think Mayhem must have won one or two fights more, but they got less objective time out of that. Because they have no I, no chance into like contesting into that ridiculous high ground that is like set up at like two thirds, and you with always fight fighting in that cat. I don't want to say cat catacomb, but you guys understand like the the roofed part of yeah, the yeah, like the neutral long tunnel, yes. right? Like if well, if you're the, at a point, point that yeah, that hard everything hard. else is so bad that you'd rather abandon the uh, objective than to fight it. 
then there's a fundamental issue with the map. Like, it's, it's the, the five percentages feel so off, especially, oh, man, I don't know. You know what? Like, yeah. Colosseo has the unfortunate reality of both being an awful map and an awful game mode at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Because at least New Queen Street, I think, is a good map. Yeah. Bad game mode, but a decent map. I think it's well balanced. It flows nicely. Yeah. Makes sense. There's no bullshit areas in the map. Coliseo is fucking bullshit from start to finish. <laughs> and it's also a shit game mode. Yeah. It's actually just like, it's suck multiplied. It's suck squared, really, is what yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like Volskaya. Uh, not, yeah. No, Volskaya is actually it's decent. Like Volskaya. It's, yeah, it's like sorry, Paris. sorry. Paris, it's Paris Luna is Colony. the worst map on, on, it used to be, what call it? What Horizon's fine? <laughs> Shut your mouth. No. <laughs> you, you shut your whole mouth. Horizon was fine. Okay. <laughs> no, it was. Um <laughs> I'll forever be scarred um, at like the Paris, bash Paris was the problem. And also the map too. Oh, no, um Paris was bad, yeah. <laughs> no one even got the joke. Oh there. Paris. Um Oof. Yeah, yeah. Double entendre. Oh, I know. So right. I get you. Um see if Get Amaze was here, the map would be better. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, it's all Vala's fault, really. If Vala, if Vala just kept getting amazed, I think Paris would have been a good map. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, uh. yeah, so I don't know that... Back to the floor, let's talk about the teams again. I don't yeah. know if... I, I see your point, and I buy a bit of it, but I don't know if I fully buy in. Because um, I see the... I, I don't know. I see... I, I value consistency. I would have preferred if we just kept it going, the same mm -hmm. as usual, play two controls, play one push, and that's fine, that we didn't do this swapping in and out alternating uh format kind of thing but at the same time i have to give respect to what the league is trying to do by shifting things up but then again you know if i have to really get into that debate the solution would be then just fucking keep two cp so that we can have five yeah, game modes I've... and then control is not the most important game mode you know or like? or you take the game mode that most people like and double that up like escort, and then you eat the one in one thousand five hundred chance that you have to replay the map because they draw. Right. Yeah. It is like virtually undrawable for the most part, and like it still. Escort really is the best, isn't it? I think Escort it is, is the best. best game. Escort is so good that if they literally deleted everything else and only did like make every map Escort and just only do Escort, yep. and Overwatch now is only Escort. The same way that Counter Strike and Valorant is only sure. plant yeah. the bomb and defuse the bomb, right? We only have one game mode. I think that would yep. be a fucking good game mode. I think that that'd be fine. Hybrid like, can stay too. Can... I don't hate I hate hybrids. Uh, yeah, that would be my only argument, and I don't what's like. Your, what's your argument? Like it would be like, well, what about hybrid? Could we not do the same thing with hybrid? But there again, you could tie. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. You uh, you add the first, you add a payload of the first point. There you go. You fix sure. hybrid. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Like I think they're just a layout. Because fundamentally, the whole point capture thing, that open point capture, like on 2CP and hybrid, that first point, yeah. that causes a lot of problems. A, because you can draw on it, which is a huge sure. one. Mm -hmm. but two, because there's nothing to regulate the tempo of your team, whereas a payload does that. Does that. So okay. when you don't have regulation of tempo, what happens is your team just fucking runs at the point like they do in 2CP, which is why you mm -hmm. get this thing where teams just double cap, because speed in this game is insane. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this wasn't a problem in Team Fortress 2, because speed was... I don't know, the characters, the regulation speed for characters was a lot more consistent. Whereas mm -hmm. in a game like Overwatch, you just have like some un unbelievable speed and then just other characters that crawl. Mm. Um, and yes, I know the heaviest on the scout is fast. I played TF. <laughs> uh, uh, my point is like, my point, I, gotta ca I gotta catch all the bad no, things. Yeah, uh, I see you, I see you moving out there, just goodness. grabbing all of them. Yeah, you know, uh, right. Right as right as some dickhead's about to type some bullshit, I've already got you. Hmm. I've already got you, you dickhead. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, I, I think the whole like the open point capture is is yeah. fundamentally like not good in a game like Overwatch, where it needs it needs like a payload. It needs like a I'm here for it. Yeah, an objective that regulates your tempo so that you can't just blitz through the map. <laughs> uh, I so, think would yeah, do it do us all some good if we had uh, a single game mode esport. If I'm gonna be honest, I think I think it's a more consistent watch yeah yep. more cons yep. i've 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 talked many a time about how overwatch feels like it lacks an identity sometimes yeah mm -hmm. and um you know the more you can do to narrow down the identity of the game the better the playing experience is because and look you're going to piss off a lot of people because oh all the for people sure like the ex the whatever game modes that are now gone are going to really hate it mm -hmm. but the people that remain are going to love it and ultimately i think you need a game 
where it's filled with people that just love everything about the game. Yes. Uh, which is where you have very focused games like Counter Strike succeeding because it's it's an extremely focused game, and all mm. the people that don't like it aren't going to play it. But fucking, that's fine. That's yep. perfectly fine. They don't need to. Yeah. Because yep. it's going to be filled with people that love it. That's what you need in the game. Mm-hmm. All right. Agreed. Next match of the day. Yes. Uh, Should we go to Dad's Glad's uh, Dallas? No, because I because I I talked about the fact that Washington, okay, displayed the blueprint on how to beat Doomfist, and I'm going to sneakily also add in the conversation of is Doomfist dead into this as well, where Mm. we've seen now is there a bird chirping? Yeah, I have uh, that's that's Harold. He lives right outside my window. If he's obnoxious, I will close the window. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, I'm calling the cops on him. (laughs) <laughs> then you know, the, the Detroit PD will be on his ass instantly, um, or not? I, the the Reddit Takes thread, a few I, minutes. I, the Reddit a few thread minutes. I actually read was saying how like the Detroit police were kind of slow, but anyway, mm-hmm. um, they don't respond quickly. So Harold's going to be there for a while. Washington versus Atlanta. Yes, my goodness, did the K shit on them so hard wow it's not just the k yes he did what did he do he flitted did lifted first man right? yeah. insane um throughout the rest the performance and uh, from everybody as well i mean it was mm. surprising even like and it, like what a, by the way people need to fucking apologize to opener because everyone True. gave that kid so mm. much crap like who is this guy you got an oc player like is this guy's gonna be awful like oh this washington back line is gonna be the worst Frillin's been pretty decent, honestly. Yeah. And opener, I'm not saying Open is the best main support, but he is well above mm-hmm. the fucking shit here that people put him in. People, people were willing to put. People were almost saying he was like the worst main support potentially. Mm-hmm. They were certainly putting him in the the bottom like bottom X main supports, and Opener was like right there, you know, mm-hmm. right in that column. But no, he's he's not at all. He's been he's been pretty good. He's dedicated. He cried after his first one he's super you know good. a lot of pressure on the kid he knows he knows he's um got a lot to prove and you know he doesn't have a backup player it's just him if he doesn't fucking pull oh. his weight his team's gonna fail because there's no first of all vigilante is not old enough second of all vigilante is a, a flex support anyway so unless you want a gangnam jim Yongbong thing going on opener has to pull his weight and he has been mm. so True. i'm just gonna say it here but you know i'm, I'm claiming him i think uh i think very soon opener might be the most successful Overwatch League player from Oceania ever. Okay. Before anyone tells me, but he's Korean. No, but he played and he played a full season of Contenders in Contenders Australia. Mm. And then now the next comment is, oh, but what about Custer? The reason why I didn't <laughs> mention him is because Custer technically played in North America. He didn't play in Oceania because he never, he never, okay, yeah, he did represent Australia for the World Cup. But when I talk about the main, I'm not talking about exhibitions. Yeah, I'm talking about the main competition. Mm. He never, he never actually competed in Australia, so he competed in North America. So, by that measure, I count him as an NA player, and, uh, mm. even though because we're not talking about nationalities here, we're talking about like the region people represent mm. is what I'm referring to. So, uh, let's go open our best Oceanic player, best Australian player. Um, uh, uh well, depending on how Washington's results go, because it probably won't be hard to surpass Trill. Dallas that year wasn't good. <laughs> and Boston's not looking too great right now. So, uh, you know, open on Washington, that just might be our North Star. Might be uh, the Australian North Star. And I mean, no, their Washington. schedule, the stage is pretty light past this point. But also, Paris people slept next. on Washington generally. I think I they slept did. on Washington because I assumed Mag would still be a little average, yep. you know, like how good is Kalios going to be? We're not, Zarya's not that great right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Krillin was good, but he's not vigilante. We're waiting for vigilante. I didn't really know what to think of Opener. I wasn't shitting on him, but I also wasn't sure. hyping him because I'm not going to hype a player that didn't really play against the top players yet to show his capability. So um, I didn't really know what to do with this roster. I knew their DPS line was going to be good. Oh, dude, Happy's Widow as well. Holy Woo! crap. It was so clean. I mean, he also was left unchecked, let's be honest. Like, I don't know where Atlanta was. Uh, I think their brains just, you know, were were boomed i don't know but like the fact that he was just Mind able room. to run around unchecked uncontested when you have somebody like kai on your team is a little suspect especially with the way that that map has trended at least publicly there is there has been a lot of widow played on the map so seeing them defend 
Kai, we we're talking about the Esco map. Kai did yeah. attack Widow, and he did actually win against Happy. Yeah, they attacked Widow, but the fact that they didn't defend with it left Happy to you know take those first two points relatively uncontested. No, like he was just able to whip shot around and just it, it was it was clinical. He wasn't. He, there was nobody to stop him. It's not going to be the Diva. Obviously, you can't play Doomfist there. I get that. Like it's just going to be oh, a yeah, bad map for play Diva. Yeah, bro, you should never be playing Diva. No. <laughs> But oh, it's, we're, we're complaining about someone playing Zarya. Dude, Diva is so much worse. Why why is anyone playing Diva? When I saw Poco bring out the Diva, I knew it was over. I was like, oh, yes. well, London have given up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they, they're clearly not winning this. It Holy is shit. it is the it is worse Doomfist. However, it's I think it's a map thing, if I'm gonna be honest. Like the architecture of that map is not charitable to Doomfist at all. Right. Uh, yeah, like it's it's tough. Mm. I, I, I feel for Atlanta, but that's where I'm like, OK, like you can't just be Houston. I think Houston are condemned and they're pilloried. And I think by next week they're going to be uh, well, seeing an news, upset. The good news is Hawk is like Piggy and Dante combined. Because he's sure. an player that plays Doom. Yes. The joke here is that Houston need two players to do what one player <laughs> to do in Atlanta. Agre- agreed. The beauty of Atlanta, and and I think this may upset some people, is I do think they have to integrate Gator if they want to see success. I think you're right. Doom is dying. How good's Gator's monkey? It's not any better. I get it. But you can't afford to be playing D.Va, right? Sure, you have your Sigma map in Circuit Royale or Royal, however we're deciding to say it. I think it is Royale. I think it is. It's not spelled that way, but it is what it is. Um like Atlanta at least has an out. Houston is f- f- cooked. Uh, Houston got exposed by shock, mind you. Toronto. It's shock. And Toronto. Oh, Toronto and then shock. Oh, shock fucked them hard. Yes, they uh, did. I mean, proper was always gonna. Proper, yeah. proper on that trace that was always gonna mm-hmm. for all the doubters. Uh, for anyone that thought Houston was actually gonna have a chance there, mm, tisk tisk. Uh, Should have known better. Atlanta, Nero tried with the Tracer. I don't want to just say he got gapped by Decay because Nero did. did really well. Who did he destroy? Nero destroyed somebody's Anna uh, recently when he went. Tra- I mean, oh, okay, yeah, but that's he, the NYXL, not yes. a good team right now. No. I mean, I think he had a minor underperformance where Decay has been just at a very high degree for Tracer. Per my article, I did a little stats dive. This kid has been pounding for five years straight on Tracer. And Nero had an underperformance. Let's call it what it is. He gapped him. Dude, you know it what else? Does. You know what else? I, I don't, you know, deservedly, I had a lot of praise for Ultraviolet. I think one of mm-hmm. the best rookies, one of the best Annas that we've seen. Yep. But my guy was on a respawn simulator. Not yes. even entirely his fault. No. There's only uh, so much you can do when Decay is on form. When Decay mm. is on deadlift form, I pray for any soul that goes up yeah. against that. So, I mean, dude. Ultraviolet dying to Decay was like Myongbong dying to Nero on steroids. Yes. Wow. It was. And that's where it sucks to, to eat this L. But at some point, you kind of need to eska yourself and just play Counter Tracer and just get in his way. Like, and that sucks to admit. Oh, you're about to say Sombra. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do need to just play the, the, the worst hero or, or just pulse bomb yourself. I don't know. You just got too many memes to count. But like, you need to just get in this enemy tracer's way. Try to give your flex support some space because you're not getting the same value that he is. Let's just call it. Let's. It is what it is. The numbers don't lie, folks. When you deadlift versus what Nero showed you, you can even see this in the eye test. I trust Reddit with this one. I think anybody, you cut the names off, I think you can tell who's playing who. It's it's pretty clear. Yeah. It, when your when your biggest difference maker, and I think Hawks Doomfist looked really good in week one when mm-hmm. teams were still figuring it out. But but Ultraviolet has probably, you know, either covertly or if you've been paying attention overtly, been your biggest difference maker. When that guy literally can't play the game because Decay has him on lock, mm-hmm. like to the point where like Ultraviolet spawns dies to Decay, spawns dies to Decay. Yeah. Like it's just it's not even funny at that point. Like he just can't play the game. Uh, your Anna is permanently dead. What can you do? And this is ironically Atlanta, the team that are so good at killing at Annas, and now they are the ones unfortunately right. feeling the heat yeah. of having their Anna constantly be dead. Um, and Tracer like hard fucks Doom as well. And I think mm-hmm. this is where like. You're starting to see the death of Doom. Like, that's the argument, right? Is Doom yeah. out of meta? 
are teams playing Doom just wasting their time now? Like, it feels Tracer like... destroys Doom in ways that Doom just has zero options against. And I'm not talking about like casual Tracer where like a Doom will kill me when I'm playing the beta because I'm not a good player. But mm-hmm. when you're going up against top tier Tracers, the kind of people that can still make a nerfed Tracer post nerf look good. I mean, Doom power blocks can only look in one direction. You can't catch, yep. keep up with a Tracer. Uh, also, by the way, when you're blocking, you're an easy as fuck pulse target. Extremely mm. easy. Um, and Tracer's damage is just so reliable on Doom. No armor either to block anything. Um, a hero that can actually follow up Doom. So if Doom's trying to run away, a Tracer can actually chase. Similar reason as to why Tracer had a good matchup at the ball last year. Um, but beyond that, like actual backline pressure, like someone that mm-hmm. Doom two like, two Tracer's in your backline. Because like, I'm, I'm so far, I've just talked about how Tracer can just dominate Doom in a kind of 1v1 setting. But how about when the Tracer's in your backline? What do you as a tank player do about that? You actually can't do anything. Nope. A Winston player can drop a bubble, try and like, you know, just left click this Tracer and harass her. Mm-hmm. A Doom has no team utility. It has purely offensive utility and no defensive utility at all. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like you, you basically trade backlines. You're like, well, Ultraviolet's dead. I have to go in and try and make something happen. But yep. uh, teams have figured out how to play against this and I'm slipped naded and dead and usually yep. what would happen is i would get slipped and naded and dead but then ultraviolet would throw a nade and we'd win anyway and nero would fuck them but now it's like no ultraviolet is dead and nero can't keep up with decay and i die if i'm the doom yep. that's atlanta's game yeah doomfist is rigid in the modes that he can play you either are in and you have to commit resources to going in or you're out trying to peel which is not ideal and you commit resources to peeling which means that you can't be in committing resources to peel right whereas winston can play in that middle ground and try to hold space and try to create and maybe you know stepping outside of the bubble to peel or like there's there's multiple modes there there's multiple modes for tracer it's also the reason why i dislike the somber so much because it is one dimensional um yeah uh, the overarching thing here is i think washington have cemented the blueprint on how to stop a lot of these doom abusers and past that i think they are growing as a team what i wanted to see coming into this match was mag finding his w key he needed to create space he can't just counter bubble he can't just play reactive this team has to have some ground to work with and look what happens when he finds his w key the decays there waiting welcoming god bless you son and and welcomes him into you know the, the fold like it's a Godfather movie, right? Like, I, I, I have a warm slash hot take here. Okay, I actually think Atlanta is the better Doom team compared to Houston. I agree. No, I don't. And, I don't know, think that's all, hot at all. All the all the Houston fans are gonna get mad at that comment because yeah, I I get it, guys. I get it. Pelicans on your team. He's he's amazing. I think he's one of the best players in the league. Uh, I don't think Echoes it. By the way, I don't think Echoes a good. No. Well, I think he's. I think she's okay, but I don't think she's defining. No. Um, and by the way, she she's struggling. As she's struggling as much as Genji struggles in, in a mm-hmm. lot of cases. We're not, here to, we're not here to talk about that. I think Atlanta, I think Hawk has been a phenomenal Doom player, especially if we compare the week one performances. I actually think Atlanta had the better yes. uh, overall Doom setup going on. Like, agreed. You know, their shit was, was, was pumping a little bit harder. I mean, that's, that's maybe a hard take. It could, they could be very, very similar. It could be 1A, 1B kind of thing here. But the fact that my point is the fact that Washington 3 0'd this shows that you know if the quote-unquote what i think is the best doom team is getting Mm -hmm. destroyed by tracer no one's safe no doom team is safe Mm -hmm. and they have an out right like atlanta at least has some flexibility with their roster granted i don't know that we'll see it i hope we see it doesn't mean we will whereas houston they have a glorified sigma player sorry have not liked what i've seen out of pigma or piggy this season like i'm sorry you have a map you have Circuit Royal. Congrats. There you go. There's your there's your gimme. Hope you RNG it well. It it this has not paid off. And I get and I'm very charitable to a lot of these flex tanks that are like, look, I I haven't had enough time. There's no ranked mode. There's no way for me to practice it. I don't trust it. My team doesn't trust it. That's fine. I get it. Uh, I I will give grace, but I can't also give grace and not crit- criticize you when other teams have you know found success with you know Kaluge having at least a serviceable monkey right like it's it's oh it's more it's, than serviceable his monkey's actually pretty good yeah I genuinely clean. joe remind me again when when did we read that uh houston is sometimes slow to meta switches where was that <laughs> uh, i didn't read that part 
I uh, I skimmed that one. All right. I just I just you know I you stun locked me with the, the Toronto top five meme and then uh. Wait, so what, yeah. hang on. Let me just let me just double check the storylines here. So Houston are the team that are slow to adapt at Midas, and mm-hmm. Atlanta is the team that complains about Midas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah. True. Nice. I like what I'm seeing out of Washington to, to wrap up. I, I want to continue to see Mag be a little bit more aggressive. I like the measured approach. I think it is a sign of like a good play and controlled play is, is great, but you can't be slow. Slow play is bad. If they continue the tempo, they should be a lock. And I say lock very confidently for at least the kickoff clash playoffs because the schedule is light work. They have what, Eric? I think it has it up on screen. They have Paris. They've got Boston, who look tragic, um, bu- 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 and some other teams that I'm going to find. Florida, that might be speaking, a little bit tough. Speaking of tragedy, okay. can I just say the biggest tragedy that we will have? That's actually not confirmed yet because it depends on who qualifies to the tournament. Sure. The biggest tragedy we have in the regular season for the stage is that Houston and Atlanta don't play each other because we don't get the Doomfist Bowl. Oh, true. We don't get the Doomfist Bowl with the two, two, two teams that are playing the most Doomfist. Mm-hmm. Twisting each other. We're not going to get that. The Hawk versus Dante matchup. Come on. Not going to get that. Yeah. I might even go. I might even be as bold as to say Houston might miss kickoff clash playoffs. What's the score? 2 2. 2 2 9 8. Uh, I think you get in 3 3, right? I think it's, I think it's tight three, if you do. I think 3 3 potentially with a tiebreaker. Yeah. 3 3 I, with a good map record probably gets you in or a tiebreaker. The question is, do you think any teams with 2-4 get in? Is 3-3 three, three the cutoff or 2-4 the cutoff? I would guess it's 2-4, but we don't know yet. We'll see. All right. But 3-3. Three, three yes, go. Uh, I'll give you the option, Any either a final comment on this, or you go to your your match here, and we'll, we'll round it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go to a final match then. What do you um, for us? So, wait, let me... I need to overview again, uh, because um, I mean we've got games like Glads Dallas. Oh yeah, Glads um, Dallas. Of we course, we meant to talk about Glads Dallas because okay. we were like they didn't talk about Glads Dallas. So this is probably the most important match of the week. Probably, man. <laughs> My prides. Oh, How our prides it collectively. I did pred Dallas. I pred yes. Dallas. That was three one though, not three two. Oh, okay. I th- the thing I think that you s- the thing that you sent me in a drunken stupor had glads. So if you did change it, then congratulations. I did. I did. I did, I did. <laughs> I would... It's what happens when you sober up. You know, you sober True, up. True. Yeah. Realize, you just on, see I the. Probably, I should probably rethink this. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little surprised when you said that. I was like, hmm. I feel like I'm drunk <laughs> having watched the match and like seeing the score, um, because this should have been a three one glads. If we're being honest. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, this was a. I mean, it was to an extent a good match, but man, I think we saw said it like on and multiple occasions this weekend. Mm-hmm. Nobody's really playing clean Overwatch, are they? No. Like, there's some messy shit going on. Hang on, if you if you go too far down that road, people will be like, "Ah, oh, see." I told you, Overwatch 2 is Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> it well, just is deathmatch. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is nuts, the, the takes that are coming out. But yeah, like in a weird way, and I feel heretical. I feel like I'm in some sort of, you know, ambient fever dream when I say this. But like the Washington right. Justice probably played the most clean Overwatch this weekend. It's because It's because we haven't seen Shanghai yet. That's the real answer. Sure. I that's fine. Yeah. I will when take Apex that. Apex starts this week. We're like, oh, there you go. Ah, oh, got it. Thank you, Moon. That's the clean Overwatch we've been mm-hmm. using. There you go. Nice quick three O's. That's or what we're looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they get O three. Who knows? You know, Shanghai. We saw last year. Who knows? We'll have to see. Yeah. Um, <sighs> so same thing with Dallas. You, say, you think it's a little messy? I I think teams. Uh, well, for, first first of all, I think uh, first of all. Um, push makes the game messy, in my opinion. Sure. Push inherently is messy as fuck. Mm. Second of all, I don't know. No, nah, this is too cop out. I, I was gonna say teams are figuring it out, but I think that's too cop out. I'm I'm gonna take that back. I'm not gonna say I, that. I think 
there's some grace there though i don't think you're too far off that like teams are still like getting their feet wet with the 5v5 and and you no, know no, i don't buy, i don't buy that anymore okay. we're, we're two and a half months in no nah. two and a half months in people have had enough time to figure this shit out uh it's it's more so like how team fights occur because the other thing is we're playing dive mm -hmm. and dive inherently can be messy sure because it requires the most coordination Yes, even more than goats, because you actually have to know what the fuck your team is doing when you can't even see them. Sure. You have to coordinate with your team without being able to see your entire team. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Um, whereas goats, you see everybody. You just have to coordinate cooldowns. Yeah, people have to aim. Um, can I just say, I like, know. Glad's running a Doom? I mean, I just gave my big speech on Doom, but man, Ryan, Ryan tried to pull out the Doom, and I feel like his Winston's been good, but he's just really forcing this Doom. Yeah, and this was even like evident, like even watching the co-stream, remembering the match against New York, like they forced the Doom on first fight control and then immediately swapped off it. And it was just really odd on like when they're playing it, when they're not. I think maybe it has some <sighs> relative efficacy versus Zarya comps, maybe. But even then, I'm still undecided because it feels like you still just get farmed. I don't know. It it is it is very strange. I think they they <laughs> i would say glads was the better team this match i think dallas i am still not sure if they're like the front runners of the zarya comp i think they're the oh, they <sighs> i i don't surely who, who else could be the front runners of the zarya comp i think they have to be Shanghai. but i mean maybe <laughs> we will have to see well, but as well. of now right like i think they have to be but like i still think they misunderstand exactly what they need to do and i think glad's also played into that pretty well um it's just I, a defensive comp it's just like the doom is gonna dive in we're gonna mm -hmm. bubble up and sparkle is gonna shoot at them with the big pistols with the shooty man reaper pistols right i know they're not pistols but you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's yes that's strategy. what i think i think that's what just... should happen but like you review that i can well especially on b and it's just like constantly they're just like double bubbling edison's tps in just to like gain some attention and then glads play into it just like all right blow up the reaper instead of like diving the clump without the reaper threat like i don't know seemed like a mess seemed like glads played into dallas's like very one-dimensional engage strategy yeah i feel like it, what was interesting about this was like i mean it was a, the nature of it being a reverse sweep and mm -hmm. like in the in the interview, they like Hanbin said he he was like personally very angry at the first two matches, and then channeled his anger. <laughs> and I believe it, seeing that Iconwald, because my lord, did this man just lose solo graphs and like pull it out himself? Yep. Like there was two occasions, both times I think on bridge, where he just mm -hmm. like refused to lose. Yep. That shit was nuts. Right, boss. And it's also like, yeah. it, it, he was like, to me, oh yeah, I knew they didn't have ultimates. I looked at the footage again. It's technically true that they didn't have ultimates, but only the members that were like five seconds out from spawn, uh, those did have ultimates. So both Genji mm -hmm. and uh, Soldier had ult up. They were just like respawning and he's like, I can kill them quicker than they can run. <laughs> and like, he just like <laughs> fucking yeeted it and it worked, right? And they bait, yep. I feel like they won the map based on that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think like Hanbin was probably a standout player for me there. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know. It feels like, okay, here's, here's the, here's the APAC problem. Okay. You know how we can, with relative confidence now, say that, Whatever meta APAC chooses has a higher likelihood of being the better meta. Okay? You guys hate sure. that? Sure. They're about to pick the same meta, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, they're, they're not really because, like, nobody other than Dallas is playing Zarya, right? Like, if APAC is actually That's playing true. Zarya... Or not as much. I think Dallas Dallas is playing the most Zarya, but, like, plenty of teams have, like, shown Zarya looks on Ike. Yeah, but um, it's not that you have no new go-to composition. It's not like the base from which you then work your the rest of your strategies off of, right? 
Like Dallas played significantly th- more Zarya than I think it might start to trend to be, if I'm gonna be completely honest. Like that like. Paris game makes me think that like this is infiltrated like a virus into like the NA scrim bubble and it will start to be. It, but I don't know. It could very well be. Now, at the same time, I'm like, you know, yeah, it or like sort of originated in Asia. How good do I feel about Asia's ability to scrim this year? And like figure sure. out metas at a quicker speed. Is it still Apex well, supremacy? Avril? I'll tell you what, during the beta, O2 Blast finally got the beta keys. So Yeah, for five hey. minutes. <laughs> for, so for the five minutes that lasted of the beta, Apex scrim quality went up Six by scrims. magnitudes. <laughs> <laughs> now it's off again? Because because Talon and O2 Blast had the beta. Uh, no. It depends on whether they... I don't know if the contenders teams have tournament access or just like normal beta access or both mm. if it's just beta normal beta access then no they don't have it anymore uh, but hey apac would they would have appreciated the short amount of good scrims they had during that time mm. um if they were good i'm not sure if the those players were able to like immediately uh, acclimate to that experience you know they are also behind like two months uh, well, you catch the fuck up pretty quick when you're yeah. in Shanghai every other day. True, sure. Um, so, and that's where it feels like another team. If another team is way ahead of you in the meta, you, you learn really quick. Yeah. It's only bad and slow if both teams scrimming don't know what the fuck's going on. Mm. I agree. One team but knows what's so going much on, knowledge, the other one huh? S- There's so much knowledge to catch up on. Like I was talking to Whoop because he has like sort of like the the situation, but it's it's more than just strategy and like knowing like having a feel for what it means to not have an off tank. It's also like now you have different movement speeds. So your muscle memory on tracking a soldier is off or something like this, you know, because okay. like they move right. differently and stuff. I think it, like it's non-trivial to catch up in a short amount of time. Yeah, there's going to be differences. I, I don't think it's impossible though. Um, Just to clean up on the Zarya topic though, I, I don't know because obviously you talk to Harmon, he's like, yeah, you know, I looked at APAC and, you know, I got inspiration from there. I don't know if I'm completely convinced that Zarya is like a predominant meta in APAC. I think some of the scrims that Harmon would have been in APAC probably did play Zarya. But I guarantee you, like it's it won't be the main oh, this is gonna this this could blow up in my face. You know, I say this and then I cast the games like, oh fuck, it is just us. It is just Zarya, isn't it? Um, but I'm willing to gamble that it's not gonna be full Zarya. It's gonna be a mixture of Zarya Winston. Uh, and maybe even Doom, maybe not Doom, maybe maybe the APAC teams watched Houston and Atlanta get fucked, and they're like, you know what, maybe not. Maybe we'll learn from that. Um, mm. Because, hey, there's some disgusting traces in APAC. Just Oof. saying. Everybody knows. Oof. Ain't gonna be no dooms play, out there. You wanna play doom into that? Doomless behind, country. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I know Asia's uh, not a country, folks. Please, Jesus. So, yeah, I, I think Zarya works for Dallas and Harmon because he's an exceptional Zarya player. So yes. They make it much better than it probably is on average. It is I've hard. Yet to see, I've yet to see other teams get that kind of value on Zarya. I've yet to see other teams hard carry as much as Harbin can on Zarya. Yes. And in, in a way, I think Harbin has to kind of play a little bit more selfishly. He's he's even taking nanos in the team as well, right? Like mm-hmm, it's not just mm-hmm. nanos on Sparkle Edison. Harbin is taking nanos. So they're definitely pumping a lot more into Zarya and playing more of a carry style Zarya. Yes. Whereas, I don't know, like if you're it really comes down to who do you want your supportive players to be? I'm not just talking about sports here. But between the DPS and tank, there's only so much healing and resources. Not everyone can be the carry. If Harmon's going to be the carry, Sparkle and Edison have to take a back seat. Yeah. Right. If Sparkle is going to be the carry, Harmon and Edison are going to take the back seat in some ways, and they got to they got to pick their carry and support that guy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they must have an exceptional Zarya play, and they also support the fuck out of Harmon to be a carry. And it makes sense. So, like, when not only is it just like that he's fantastic at it, but like it shores up the space that your Reaper may or may not be getting. My issue with them in particular, because it seems like they're and maybe this is just the one map and I'm I'm slightly biased in this way, um, is is I don't think that you can just get away with just Reaper TP engaging. I need to see a different look out of them coming into this next week to kind of what like stamp them as that team. What else do you do? Like the problem with the Reaper Zari team attacking and defending is fine because they're going to come. Exactly. You, Agreed. But attacking is like, how do you, how, else do you how do you engage? This team can't dive. 
No, they can't, especially when you hold such a high ground like Castle or, you know, just you name. Weird that it wasn't a 3-0 because LA yes. Gladiators had a much better comp. Mm-hmm. They played Winston Echo and Ick- Dallas were on Reaper. What? Reaper what again? Reaper um, Genji, Reaper Soldier, it, it, something like that. That does nothing to Echo. This is the one no. time I'm going to be like, yeah, actually, Echo is fucking insane. Yes. Because Echo Reaper specifically Genji is great in Desire. do anything into that. So I, glad should have had this map in the bag, but they fucked up easily. Easily, I 100 believe that Angry like teams are too good. <laughs> agreed. I think it's it's coming down to the dive team having to change up the tempo of the game and giving a little bit of that space to the Zarya team. Like they have to play for so much resource control that you can't just like forehead engage anymore you have to change up the tempo of the game or you just run into the reaper or you play into the reaper and then lose space you're you're just playing into the comp at that point you have to kind of like give a little space made out a lot of these cooldowns and then engage which is what you saw on point a right you saw hanbin you saw edison kind of like juking around on defense he gets a bubble early they immediately capitalize on that and they steamroll point A on Glad's attack. It was it was very clinical and it felt like they knew exactly what to do. It just didn't I, last the entire map. I got a question. Uh, this will, we'll, we'll actually wrap up on this point. Okay. So hopefully it won't be a long one. Is that what do you guys think of the Patapan situation now in week two with Kevstar Arns playing instead? Now, my personal read mm-hmm. is that it's just... A hero pool thing in terms of what you want where because you know people mm. ask asking us like oh why is nero playing tracer when you yeah. have venom fair enough question the reason is your tracer player must also be your genji player and venom doesn't play genji nero plays both that's why now when you look at the glads kevster's obviously never going to bench he's your star player yeah um arns can just be a full-time soldier and then kevster will be your tracer genji player and kevster's going to be better on those heroes than patty is that's my read on it I don't know if anyone has anything deeper than that, or maybe you have a hot tag. Maybe, you, maybe you have a conspiracy theory. <laughs> no, I think um, Boil hand. I think it's just that that Hans is pretty decent, and that they like. I, I don't think you necessarily would. I think like if you're in a position where you think Patty is struggling. Then you probably like know it's for reasons of sec- like security or like confidence, and you would probably give him more game time rather than less. I don't think that's what's happening. Yeah, I think it's the legitimately hero pool thing. Where I mean, at the same time, like if the meta is played where aunts should be playing, you probably should be playing aunts. Yeah, because. And- what people might say is like, oh, well, I mean, couldn't Patty and Kev still just play these heroes? I mean, Kev's still playing a lot of Genji. Arns play Soldier. I mean, Patty can just play the Soldier and Kev can play Genji Tracer, shouldn't they? But I think the more you look at it, the more you're like, well, Arns is a dedicated hit scan. He should be, yes. if anything, he should be your, your main Soldier player, right? Yeah, mm. no, I agree. And I don't think there are going to be too many instances where you like need the Genji Tracer. You also run into instances where last week against Boston, Glad's had that weird kind of mix up where like you need or you rather want maybe Kevster on the Genji, but Patty's also there and like they have that like weird friction like mid match where it felt like they were trying to adjust, but also like not trying to lose a lot of their alt value where now it just feels like, okay, cool. We have our best player on the carry heroes, Patty, either if you're charitable to the, the, you know, confidence argument, then, you know, maybe he can get some game time in and, and feel a little bit better against the rest of the schedule. I still don't necessarily think that that's the case. I think that you just need Kester on the tracer to be, you know, that clutch factor, that, that star performance, you want him on the, the Genji as is, and then Ons can kind of fill in the blanks and then also not have to come in cold. Uh, on escort maps where like widow is something that you want to play so it, it makes a lot of sense okay so are we worried about the glads or is this just a speed bump i think this is just a speed bump i think this is an underperformance i i said it earlier i think they were the better team on the day for the most part um and then it just got spaghetti as the the series went on glads um, have a really poor map five win rate i think yeah going back historically last year the map five win rate was not good 
And Atlanta was yeah, a lot of those okay. those those spines in that record. A lot of oh, yeah. I feel like I remember a lot of those map five to qualify and Atlanta comes out and steals it away from him. Alrighty. Well, with uh, that and done, we're not going to talk about any other games. Sadly, we've already talked about a lot of things here, um, especially with APAC coming up. There's just simply going to be way too many games to talk mm. about. Um, also, in future episodes, I'll probably, as expected, focus more on the APAC matches and you know we'll sort of balance out uh, how many games to talk about and what. Depends on how much other news there is. I think there was uh, extra stuff out this week with the, the Eternal stuff and the Watch 2 stuff, so mm. extra things to talk about. Um, also, we kind of cheated and fit in a very minuscule Paris-Toronto thing in there as well, so we kind of got <laughs> almost we got three and a half in there, didn't we? Um, Glass and Shock do play in the regular season as well. Uh, that's coming up in week three. Very yeah, exciting matchup. Uh, I do think Shock probably take that one. Yeah, but um, right. if you're watching this before the APEC game start, I look forward to seeing you there. I'll be there on opening day with the opening two matches. Um, nice. Cool. And um, if you're really keen for content and you want to know more about the APEC matches, we're actually going to talk about that next, but not in this episode. On the next episode, mm. 234 before 233. That's it for us. We'll see you soon.